Hello! If you're watching this on YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witchlight. Uh, we're continuing our tradition with reading your comments on the previous YouTube video. So while you're enjoying these comments, and of course Gary Goodberry, make sure you like the current video, give us a little subscribe, check that bell so you never miss an episode, and let's jump right into the comments. From Once Upon a Witchlight episode 22, we have, and I quote, I'm so happy for Gideon. It only took 22 sessions for him to finally get a good fight in. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. The look on Frost's face when Gideon asked, who's this? Derek and Frost were too stunned to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does Mikey have gloriously long hair oh. today, but so does Rich, a treat. Thanks. I hope where they add Torbeck into the thumbnail and intro, it's just a poor drawing of Torbeck taped to the lineup in the intro. It pauses for a moment after Frost verse, and Andy says in the voice, Also, oh, Torbeck is here. <laughs> the poorly drawn page. Okay, but hold on. We literally made that for you. That's why I included that comment. They're reading our minds. <laughs> I really hope they read the letters from the first episode soon. I'm very curious what they say. <laughs> <laughs> what is they talking about? Don't let us. So anyway, leave a comment uh, below, and perhaps you can be included next time. Also, be sure to check out our Patreon, which we've just done a big overhaul on, and check out our merch shop. Thank you so much, and enjoy tonight's episode. <gasps> and now, a word from our new sponsor. Our what? Hey! Hi! What? Can you believe it, folks? This is going to be a PSA that that stands for pretty sweet announcement. <laughs> <laughs> and this one is dedicated to all of you who hate commercials during stream. <laughs> It's dedicated to you, folks. You know what I mean? This is my new PSA about the dangers, the glories of... Anyway, I'll stick to the script. I'm covering up Mace. Oh! It's okay. No, we need a new oh, oh, Okay. I'm in this? Oh, the hell. We zoom in to Mapletown, USA. Somewhere idyllic. Or is it idyllic? I don't know. <laughs> the sun is shining. The birds are even chirping. Timmy and Eddie are working, walking through the park. They're not working, they're children. We live in the, in the current age. That's been outlawed. Surely nothing at all can ruin this day. And that is not really foreshadowing anything. <laughs> oh boy. I love being an impressionable young mind. Sh sh surely no one would come to this lovely park with nefarious intent. Nope. This is where we enter. The coffee dealer. <laughs> hey, hey, kids. You want to try some geek grind coffee? Wow. Geek grind coffee. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, yeah. Geek Grind Coffee. We've got some really great flavors like Night of the Blight Hazelnut and Desert Winds Night of the Chupacabra. And don't forget Witch's Brew Dark Roast. Wow! That sounds amazing! What's in it for us? <laughs> yeah, should we even be... Drinking coffee? Well, yeah. It tastes great. And it'll make you cool like Billy Joel without the cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> who's Billy Joel? Yeah, Here, who's Billy Joel? The first one's free. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Even for <laughs> oh, 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 This is pretty good. I mean, no. I mean, yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, I gotta get... Got you a rave seat now that I'm done drinking the coffee. <laughs> Timmy, Eddie, and the coffee dealer dance with the mugs and flashing lights. I'm pretty sure even Billy Joel was there. <laughs> wow, I love geek grind coffee. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah, this is so much better than drugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
you know, this is the kind of legal chemical dependence that we can rely on. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. So you gotta go to geekgrindcoffee.com and use the code of uh, LEGEND20. LEGEND20 to get 20% off your first purchase. You know? Yeah. You know, and maybe you'll even get a chance to meet Billy Joel <laughs> in your own life, not part of the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> who knows who, who you'll run into? It might be Billy Joel. <laughs> you know, we can't say for certain you won't meet Billy yeah, Joel. Yeah, we, or we also can't legally. We can't say that you will either. <laughs> so, so all you folks out there, I hope you enjoyed my PSA, especially, especially all you who hate commercials during streams. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Geek Crime Coffee. Thank you. Thank they you are so very much. delicious. Yeah. All right, let's get some the, coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's, let's, let's take a coffee, a coffee break. All right. But All I also right. want to personally thank the folks at Geek Grind Coffee. Uh, it's amazing. Um, they actually source all the coffee um, from Colombia, uh, from uh, women-owned and operated farms, a bunch of super nerdy flavors, um, and they are our first channel sponsor for the foreseeable future. And so, if you don't like coffee, they have amazing tea. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. Hot chocolate. It's and overwhelmingly hot chocolate. awesome. Yes. Yeah. We so got, check we them got out. quite a few of the labyrinth flavor teas, and yeah. um, I'm David Bowie's on like half the bag. Thing. It's so yeah. great. Yes. Love you guys. Woo! Thanks for all that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. No, wait. We got to sing the song we all know the lyrics to. Okay. Project Tiny Arms. Project, Project Tiny, Tiny Arms. Arms. Let's go. Project Tiny Arms. Project Tiny Arms. Let's go. Project Tiny Arms. Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stirred in her tower. And through grand halls, past lock and key, came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite, the third a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken, something blighted had come hither. Foul as nightshade creeping thither, from yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire. A ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood. A doll set, beasts and wild things. But listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear. A song that calls the spirits there. A song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal. A rocking horse with ashen mane. Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky, when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion. Each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toys placed in a chest, with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witch-light hour.
Oh, 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 o
the soft breeze. <clears throat> the scarecrow seems interested in you, but not completely engrossed. Occasionally mumbling to itself and for all intents and purposes, not trying to hold down a conversation with you. Do you have a question or? Yeah. Uh, does Frost know what Gehenna is? Uh, roll a religion. Yeah, let's say religion check. I guess history would work too. I'll let you choose. I prefer history. Go for it. <laughs> of course you would. Not that I'm trying to optimize this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then the flood uh, of '83, no, Gerald yeah. was born. You're thinking of the the War of '82. And then, for <laughs> for the sake of making it easy for you, that is an image of Clapper. Oh my God! Oh. Wait, oh. is the is the whole big thing his head, or just the little small thing on top? The whole feet? big thing is his head. Oh wow! It's a two tiered gourd. It's got like a crab claw. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I prefer religion mm. for some reason. Interesting. What in the hell? Uh, that'll be a natural one. Do you guys think Ooh, I should stop. twist this? No, I'll, I'll take it. Uh, let's go with an eight. Mm. You imagine, um, the word sounds familiar. As you know, you've heard of it before. Uh, what it is, where it's from, any specifics about it, you have no idea. But mm. you've definitely heard the name. Hey, kid. Oh, are you talking to me? Yeah, is, is your name... We were told the name Cat Clapperclaw by... I believe so. Yes, you were. Uh, yes. Somebody you else have heard the that. name... Uh, uh, Jingle Jingle told you of Clapperclaw. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Is your name uh, Clapperclaw by chance? How did you know my name? Am I getting, like, super famous? Well, no, we heard all about you. We, we know that you're... So I am getting super famous? I mean, you know, your name precedes you, so yeah, I guess you kind of are. For what did I do to get famous, do you think? Well, we heard that you're the only one that can... Is it because Egden Longscarf stole my head and is now holding it hostage so I have to wear this gourd where my head had been? Mm. Oh, he, he he's the one who stole your head? Yeah, that's why I'm here. I snuck away from Downfall in the hopes that I would be able to get my head back. Well, uh, our, our best friend Torbeck uh, took care of that fella. You're not going to have to worry about him no more. Yeah, we'd offer you his head, but it's kind of really more just like bone chips and blood. And I like, do like bone chips and blood, and like, but oh, I would really prefer to have my head back. But the thing is, I can't <clears throat> climb up to the top of this dump to get it. Oh, so, oh. so, so, A, it's good that he's dead, though, right? We did the right thing, huh? Well, because I've been dead before, I, like, am not so worried about people dying and stuff. Like, it's going to happen. Right. Eventually, you know. Well, what we did was, that was like, justified, right, fellas? I mean, it was pretty brutal, but, you know. He stole a, a lot to... of things from a lot of people. Oh, who'd she keep playing on your fly, pl fly pad? <laughs> oh, that's rabbit soup. <laughs> Mm, Torbeck still isn't really sure that Torbeck did this. Oh, it was definitely you, man. You no, should take was... this, by the way. I think you're now the brigand prince. Uh, I toss him the scarf. No, oh. Torbeck doesn't want this. I don't know. I think it's kind of like a keep what you kill kind of situation. I think it's just like whether you want it or not, you wear the crown. Yeah, there must almost always be a schmavy schmone, you know? Oh, it's completely soaked through with what I hope is swamp water. Uh, oh, yeah, no, he was in. I chased him down there as a crocolisk. Yeah, you're fine. Uh, yeah, or I guess I dragged him into the depths very grossly <laughs> and gave you, I really alley you to that <laughs> scene of uh, blood and, or was it bone chips and blood you said, Gideon? Bone chips and blood. You know, actually. That's about all that's left in his ear. Strangely, that was the name of um, our band when I was in Goblin College. <laughs> it was bone chips and blood. Oh, I was going through a bit of a phase. Were you kind of one of those, like, experimental. Yes. Oh, God. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh, oh, why did I admit that? <laughs> Anyway, Torbeck, I think you, I think uh, Gideon is right. I think you are the brigand prince now. Oh, guys, really? This was some sort of horrible accident. Uh, that's a good question. How, how, and what, why, who, whom, go on, whom sliver? Uh huh. And bees? <laughs> Answer all of seven, please. Torbeck doesn't know! <laughs> hmm. 
<clears throat> Look, I mean, from based on what we saw, we can gather that, you know, you sniff danger and those those plungers just, you know, they did the thing and the tubes were going and your blood was sort of mixing with the, with the goop and you transformed again. <clears throat> Wasn't uh, quite as spooky as the first time, I'll admit. I mean, you were like still half the size thing for guys, but I mean, you were still a big fucker and you, I mean, we, the bones break in and... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, you, you literally, your hands turn into, you know, like, like, a, like a fucking meat grinder, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, and you know, I'm I'm very used to uh, uh, changing form, but it's more of like a mystical woodland spirit, <laughs> as opposed to like, oh, breaking sinews and <laughs> stretching <laughs> ligaments. <laughs> I'm really familiar with stretching ligaments, because sometimes when I bogger it out, I just get really big, you know? Although I guess it's mostly, it's mostly like, not even really me, you know? It's like a lot of shadowy stuff. You're more familiar with it, I think. I mean, uh, I sort of understand the feeling, but... But I think what that means is we're a lot more similar than we thought, you know? Also, my my glass is cracked. Really? See? I can and there's a those. huge crack in her oh. glasses that make it look like in one space her eye, there are three different eyes there. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. This probably looks horrific. Yes, yeah, so would you like me to repair that? No, I'm sure? going to I'm going to sow fear in the hearts of many. Twig, Twig, you had a rough couple of minutes. Uh, yeah. Here, here you go. Here, just oh, one, look at just this one more, just get one more down for me. Look at this little just, tiny banana. Just one, just, it's, it, well, yeah, it's, it's a banana. It's a little mini fella. There we go. Okay. Oh, I squeezed it too hard and it splooshed all over my That's face. That's what it's supposed to do. It's oh, medicinal. Oh, That's the good stuff. That's it's the in my part. nose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they used to be, when I first started, when I first started that, that spell, they were like, ooh, plantain sized. <laughs> uh, so I've been working on getting them smaller and smaller to make it more palatable in action packed situations. Thank you, Griko. <sighs> Are you sure you don't want me to uh, repair your glasses? You need them to see. Yeah, I mean, no, these aren't prescription. I just wear them because I'm cute. Oh, okay, then that's fine. <laughs> uh, how many uh, 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 fingers am I holding up? Seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> and see, watch, do it again. Seven. Frosty's very good at repairing things. You should give him a good let him show you his stuff. You remember when I repaired one of the trinkets in your home before we destroyed it? Horrible. Yeah, I do. That's when I knew we were going to be the best of friends forever. Mm. That was right after. No, that was before it was all broken by Grico. Yes. Was it all me? Uh, yeah, 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 it was all you. Yes, yeah, yes. clean the uh, place up, fixed it up. You zug zugged just... all over. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll hate when that happens. <laughs> uh, Torbeck, the deduction that we're making is that uh, when you're under the influence of this material in your back chambers, <laughs> this uh, this witch light, uh, that you don't know what you're doing. You uh, become another person entirely. Uh, someone. Uh, uh, some personality seems to dwell within you, uh, uh, waiting to rise up to the surface as soon as you are transformed. Yeah, I can I can relate to that a lot, because I have my buggered in me all the time trying to come out. <laughs> oh, Frost. Does Frost mean the other voice? Uh, you can hear this other... Do you have a... Uh, conversations with this stranger in your mind? Oh, no, just Torbeck just drinks a lot, and that usually keeps them at bay. Are you being honest with me? Yes, why would Torbeck lie? To hide the fact that you're having conversations with some sort of sinister other. Well, I think what he's saying is that he does have conversations with this sinister other, but he drinks to make him go away. Uh, conversation <laughs> is very one-sided. <laughs> Look, we're not going to get to the bottom of this now, you understand? No, no, I agree. And, I mean, should we be concerned about the, like, 50 rabbits that were on top of that stump um, aiming bows and arrows at us? Well, back is now their king well, or prince. that's what prince. I mean. By right of conquest or whatever, like, put the thing on. Oh, Torbeck's always wanted to be royalty. <laughs> you know, like, I'll start to put the scarf on. It makes this horrible, like, squelching wet noise against my fur. And there's, like, oh. 
You know, I'm like holding, Torvax holding back tears as he puts on the bloodstained scarf. <laughs> oh, oh, it looks so nice. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you look beautiful. Uh, in with minor illusion, I'll make my voice boom out. Look at that! It's a uh, tall back long scarf, brigand prince of Prismere. That's a handsome scarf you got there. Hey! Hey! Got oh, yes. oh, ask, ask about the F sack. Uh, what? The, the F sack with all of our souls, what they took. Well, no, I'm not, we're not gonna jump right to that. Let's try to see what we can do getting up there. Oh. And as as you say all of this, you still have the spell active as your voice booms <laughs> out over these. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, I didn't turn it off. Oh, shit. Uh, Mute fucking idiots. Uh, and you, you wait and listen. You hear your voice echo out over the, uh, over the swamp, but you do not hear any response. There is no clapping in response. You do not see any heads peek out over the, the top of the ridge of the stump. It is quiet. <clears throat> All right, so either they're gone or they're waiting for some kind of ambush. <clears throat> I'm not sure which I'd prefer, to be honest. Gone means the lack of danger and also the lack of knowledge that they have about this stump and the rest of the city. If they were to swear allegiance to Torbeck, we would learn much. Well, I mean, we should definitely keep it as a plan. But I mean, th- either way, we got to get up in that stump. We got to get this fella's head back, and we got to find that F sack. Exactly right. I say we just head on in. I mean, what the, even if there are fifty uh, rabbits in there, I mean, Twigs is gonna kill like half of them in an instant. So I mean, see what she did back there. Yeah, it's. I almost did the <laughs> clapper claw. Um, yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I'm a hardened killer now. Yeah, I think we're so, sh- yeah, someone's going to have to hold me back and pick Tunia as dis- indisposed. Wait a minute. And I'll point to the, the boat with the war crime to annihilated rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> that was put to sleep first. <laughs> <laughs> that was... That wasn't... That was... No, no, all I did was hit Twigs, Twig, uh, Twigsy, what's the name, Twigsy? Tw- my well, name's Twig. Twig. I mean, Twigsy, because she's cute, you know, so yeah, Twigsy. I hit Twigsy in the face with a horrible necrotic spell, and I spent the rest of the combat trying to keep her alive. Yeah, yeah see, can... look at my glasses, it's broken. Yeah, I'm trying to punch the rabbits and missing everybody, so I mean, she did almost all that. I think she hit the numerical value that considers her godlike. I had to help my friends, because otherwise you were all going to die. Yeah, like I had her my arms and she's like I'm dying of onism but then she like lifted her arm out and like blew their fucking heads off it wasn't her their head well it was kind of their heads that she blew off <laughs> 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 anyway Gregor, you missed it but their crotches exploded <laughs> Hoochie, here's your fly pad. Oh, here's another, here's some more flies. I'm like, reach my back and just throw a handful of flies on the lily pad. <laughs> she kept calmly raising her arm and saying, this is my final act. And then would kill a rabbit. And say, this is my final act. And then kill another. Yeah, that she did that like 18 hours. times. Guys, oh, we may be turning down a dark path in this adventure. <laughs> But you know what? I guess it's what we got to do. One question I have, uh, Torbeck. Um, did your back canisters refill? I try to like, look up and see if the back canisters have refilled. I don't uh, know how obvious it is. You look at them and oh, you see bits of bubbling course. as clearly the liquid is slowly rising up. Oh. Oh. When you ask this question and try to look, uh, Torbeck tries to look at his own back and be his walking in circles. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll just hold, I'll, I'll, someone told me, look, go take a look. <sighs> oh, oh. I'll back. And you see, you see that. Yeah, yeah, I see that it's rising. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> what is this well, me? Right. What I mean, is this me? How is that even possible? Where's it coming from? I don't know. I mean, it's got to be magically regenerating himself. I think the bigger question is, what the hell is its trigger mechanism? I'd say it's tied to some kind of biological component in his body that triggers upon fear, but he's basically always afraid. So you think he's <laughs> you always think, be? Tra- do you think maybe it's a word? Someone said a word. <gasps> I don't know. Oh, you think it could be initiative? That's the best joke of the night. That's the best joke of the night. <laughs> 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 that's the best joke of the night. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Easily. 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 That's a dairy joke. That's like that. That was winner. Shockingly uh, intelligent and smart. Corbett yeah. <laughs> uh, has to kill the Prime Minister of Mori. <laughs> That Torbeck, he's so hot right now. <laughs> Torbeck is the original Daryl Lee. <laughs> Oh my god! It works on so many levels. Yeah, if we don't get it. some Zoolander <laughs> tour back in the we riot. We riot. Uh, we need that whole scene animated. Oh my between god, because you, and could, evil you could be Derek Zoolander and then Gideon could easily be Hans. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not your bro. Yeah, second personality <laughs> speaks in the back of your head and you're just like, God. <laughs> uh, the files are in the fan engineering. <laughs> we were lied to. It's not in here at all. Uh, Come on, Torbeck. Let's go get some orange mocha cappuccinos. <laughs> and then that's when Draco, that's when Draco Frost and Kermy Dine a free guest <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the rest of the yeah. session is just you later. <laughs> We're just having a sexy right? gasoline fight, and then somebody <laughs> lit it on fire. How are we to do? No, uh, gentlemen, my top uh, hypothesis is that he has the same amount of witch light in him, and that uh, perhaps it's not a word, but um, the adrenaline of combat that uh, the the witch light seeks out, or or perhaps triggers the plungers as they go, and uh, what's in him is. Slowly sapping back into the canisters. <clears throat> oh. I mean, that's, that feels a little too logical for the Feywild. I mean, I just feel like it's magic. We got we don't got to explain shit. It just happens. The serum, uh, the, whatever this liquid is, may be Fey, but the devices are clearly some sort of uh, 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 machine, uh, uh, a device that's trying to control that. I've that's, seen a lot of kids engineering. It looks <clears throat> nothing like well, I mean, I've been trying to figure out this fan engineering, but I'm only 20 pages in so far, and it's, it's only been a children's uh, fantasy tale about the power of friendship. So I haven't gotten to the piece that talks about bioengineering yet. I'm hoping that's like page 21. Oh, it's a young adult novel. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I suppose I could skip all of it, but what if it ends up being important in the end? Oh, you know? it's like the main character, a heroine who's very plain yet beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I, I, parents both dead? Does she have a bow and arrow? She's, <laughs> she's extremely clumsy, but she's also a, a, a stealthy killer. Ah, okay. Oh, she's probably got two different colored eyes. <laughs> well, actually, her father's dead. Her mother went missing at a young age <laughs> oh. for unknown reasons. Oh, so but. she thinks that the mother's dead, and then and then suddenly the mother will come back only to die a book later. Hey, spoilers, <laughs> man. Spoilers. I don't have actually, a normally, engineer too for dummies. Normally yet. the mom comes back and is some kind of princess of like a fairy kingdom or something mm -hmm. and she finds out she's not fully human she's also she's a half elf actually and that's why her ears are kind of pointy uh, mm. I don't know if she's coming back though because I mean I, she, I don't see how she could come back in the story there's a character that's got a mask on that has kind of the same ears and is about the right height but I don't think that that's her I, you know, you're right that's ridiculous it's, it just wouldn't fit at yeah, all make any sense yeah. so much out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean come on you know she's dead yeah. And the mask is probably just a coincidence. No, I mean, you know, you never unmask a masked character. That's their whole thing. Yeah, you know, they're all about the mask. So. Anyway, <laughs> let's continue. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Crabclaw, fella. Crabclaw. Crabclaw. Would you like to join us at the top of the stump? Unfortunately, I cannot get to the top of the stump. Well, what if we, like, carry you up to the top of yes, the stump? We can escort you. We can help. I was told I wasn't allowed to go up there, so that means I can't go up there. Well, who told you that? One of the bullywogs in Downfall. Well, I mean, how are they going to know? We won't tell them if you don't. So, you mean you can just do the opposite of what you say you're going to do? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Yeah, unless we you do that all the time. Some horrible curse at a carnival where you can't do that. Are, are you saying that's a living hell? Let me tell you. Are you saying that you promised that you wouldn't go to the top of the stump? I was told like 
oh, you know, this guy has your head and you are not allowed to go get it. So you can't go to the top of the stump. And I said, okay, I won't go to the top of the stump. I will go stand at the bottom of it. Has anybody got a copy of those three things? I was just, just, torment, I was just thinking of those. Uh, no, I think I think what's more important is whether or not the promise may may have some negative effect. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps going up there would break her word, and, and well, it, it may not be anything to do with the law. But who are but, they to say, I mean, he's the prince. Like, he owns the whole stump now. What if he just invites her in, you know, and it kind of overrides the, the or, uh, you know, what, what, yeah, it overrides the, like, hey, you can't go up there. He's like, hey, come on, right, come on in, you know. <laughs> I like friends. There's a difference between promising not to do something and someone telling you you can't. For example, (laughs) Mr. Krammy used to tell Torbeck to climb up the Ferris wheel, but don't fall off. (laughs) And Torbeck regularly (laughs) fell off. (laughs) No promises, Mr. Krammy. But the reason I kept you around is you survived. Most didn't. In fact, no one else did. Yeah, no, I guess you're right. Not a single other of those three dozen fellas survived. <laughs> we call that the 35. I kept raising the, I kept raising the pay of my whole copy piece every time one died. And just, yeah. We can never attract the right talent. Is that why those pigs that we kept around were always so well fed? Practical <laughs> my... <laughs> Albeit limited understanding of the uh, rules of this place of the Feywild, and you may understand better than me depending on how long you've been here, but my limited understanding is that there's a rule of hospitality, of ownership, and of reciprocity. However, at the top of this stump are not items that were owned by the people who told you you couldn't go up there. They were themselves stolen, and so I think that you have every right to go and return you what you rightfully oh. own to, to your head. I would really like to have my head back if there's a way to get it. Well, well about, join us. Well, how about this? If if you feel weird about going up there, then why don't we just get we'll it? We'll go. Yeah, we'll yeah. go fetch it for. What you. does it look like? So it's really cool. It is. <laughs> okay. It has antlers on it. Okay. Oh. It is. I'm not oh. sure if it's a goat or a donkey. Do donkeys have antlers? Okay. <clears throat> No, not no of a goat, no it is, uh, it is donkeys some have kind animals. of creature that has antlers. Goats kind of have antlers, don't they? They got no. No, there's a horn screaming. They have horns. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it is definitely antlers. World? <laughs> so oh, yes. I would like to have it back. Please. Okay. <laughs> would you like to join us, or are you safe here? It is a stag. Oh, a stag. That's what I was drawing. Does it look like this? And I'm going to do like as a hyper realistic <laughs> a beautiful stag. Drawing. Yeah, a beautiful nature drawing of a stag head. Like something you find in like, the yeah, 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 to the best of my ability. Um, if I can. No, not really. Um, oh. The cheekbones are a little too high, and I would shorten at least a few of the antlers. Uh, you might have gotten a little too realistic. Uh, can I use, can I draw on this? I'll kill you. Okay. <laughs> <Was there? laughs> so then I'm gonna go back. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna go back into it, into the book, and I'm going to, to draw this. I will watch what you're drawing. You could have drawn it this. <laughs> Oh boy. This is definitely the Andy school. You're doing really well. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. That's the one. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. okay. Now, now we know. Oh, that sounds like a oh, lead to Tormek. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Well, you, you certainly look uh, very uh, smiley and smirky, confident. I was a lot more happy when I had my antlers on my That's head. so good. Okay. Uh, I propose that, that uh, Clapper Blonde join us. I have many questions about uh, this place that uh, you're from, Gehenna. I, uh, I, feel like- I don't have many answers about it, honestly. All I can remember is there were a couple of other kids there. Um, none of us really know where our souls came from before they went to Gehenna, but we mm. know that they were there because of somebody who wanted them to be there. Um, the only things I remember before Gehenna were a huge moon, um, and that's about it. 
Oh, oh okay. a huge moon. Huge moon. Huge moon. And, so then you, and then you found yourself <laughs> a Gehenna. crazy looking smile on it. <laughs> and oh, you knew that. that you weren't going to be. Oh. Uh, okay. This is... <laughs> oh, oh, that, sounds, that sounds suspicious. Mm. Never mind. Okay, I'm going to write moon. Yep, well, that uh, was it. Uh, uh, please, please join. Uh, uh, my name is Morning Frost. Uh, this is Twig. Uh, I'm Gricko. This is Gricko. I, I, I gestured to Twig. Yeah, but I'm here too, Gricko, just because I'm shorter than you. Oh, and I'm oh, doing oh, this. oh, I didn't know you were standing back there. I wanted what to are you talking your... about? I've been breathing in your armpit oh. this whole time. Are you hungry? Are you hungry, Kai Yeah, Claw? really. Oh. <laughs> oh, here you go. I've got a couple left over. Here's another one. She squirts it all over her face again. Yeah, it's like a little. Damn it! I can never get that right. Crab claw. I don't know if you can eat in your current state, but I mean, he's got big old crab claws. Well, no, and I don't need to eat because I'm literally just a soul trapped inside of this body that was given to me by a hag. So what's the deal with the crab claws anyway? It's just the things she had in her house that she puts together to create the body for me. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a mix and match sort of deal. (laughs) Hey, why were you a downfall earlier? I was sitting on the dock trying to figure out where my head was. Oh, well, that's good. That's, and that's that when the Bullywugs sense. told me, oh, it's the the Prince of Brismere who, who has your head. It was given to him by the hag that's here. <laughs> because the hag that made me isn't the hag that was here, but the hag that is here is the one that gave my head to the brigand Prince of Brismere. So I came here to try and get my head back. Wait, who's the hag? What made you? Yes, this was going to be my question. Granny Nightshade is the one that made me. No, Shay. That's none of them that I know. That's not Scabitha, which is the one that's here. Well, that's one of the other ones, right? Wait, is it not Grant Notch's first name, Scabitha? <laughs> we need to get one of those cork boards so that we can like. <laughs> I mean, you've been wait, saying Scabitha. Wait, hold on, hold on. Pepe Silva, Pepe Silva. <laughs> are you thinking that? Are you thinking that Scabitha is the one that is here because she? No, not. she's not the one that's here. The one that's here is. Uh, Blavona Blotstraw, Blavona Blotstraw. Yes, that's, that's the then there's Endelin Moongrave. Moongrave. So that means the only one left is Scabafa Notche. Oh wait, Notche. It's not, oh, it's Scabafa something. Is it Notche? Let me check my notes. <laughs> Why is this head giving out your head? Is it some kind of powerful object? And wait, it's not even Scabatha that's here. It's the Vlorna Blade Star that's here. That's yes. what I'm saying. I'm asking who made you that? Who made your your head and claws? I just told you, Granny, Granny Nightshade. Nightshade. Granny Nightshade. I'm just saying, what's your first name? Oh, I just wrote down Blavorna, <laughs> and that's all I got. Uh, uh, I also <laughs> wrote down Bevlorna's <laughs> card. At the moment. <laughs> Frosty, you're very small with Nars memorizing abilities. Oh, I found this cute picture of a reindeer or something. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. oh, he is cute. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah, that's kind of charming, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I like his little smile. You know? Yeah, he's <laughs> got kind of a little right angle <laughs> smile going on. Hey, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, Frost is thinking. Uh, Torbeck was on. Also thinking, and Torbeck is revealing the rules that you all taught Torbeck about Prismir. Yeah, these ones. Where does unlawful murder <laughs> fall under acquisition of things that aren't yours? To be fair, the more that we learn about this uh, uh, Agden guy, he was kind of a dick. So I think um, it's- I can answer that question for you. The moment someone is dead, their property ceases to belong to anyone. Unless there is a next of kin who has claim to that property. And in this case, there is no one here to claim it. So should you want to claim said scarf, said scarf now is belonging to Torbeck. Well, Torbeck doesn't want to, but... uh, And you know what that means? I mean, Torbeck kind of wants to. But do you know what that means? What? I have two skiffs. (gasps) <gasps> this oh. skiff and this skiff formerly belong to one twig. Well, then this... If anyone can test my claim to skiff one and skiff two, speak now or forever hold your peace. My skiffs! And this scarf that is soaked in the blood of Torbeck's enemies now belongs to Torbeck. If anyone wants to <sighs> claim it... Speak now, or forever hold your peace. Please don't speak. Torbeck doesn't like confrontation. 
Well, uh, nobody said anything, so I it's think yours we're now. In the clear twig. Yep, I own a skip. I own a skip. One skip, two skip. I own a skip. You Is own it? a bloody scarf. It's gross. It looks cute on you because you're all so gross. Uh, oh, that's not very yeah, gross. Left handed <laughs> couple, man. <laughs> but Torbeck will take it. <laughs> well, uh, you know, okay. Uh, Twig, the next step of our journey, now that you have two skiffs, is to make sure, A, that these skiffs stay where they are, and B, we need to make sure that they are sturdy for when we, while we are investigating the big old stump. Okay, um, well, if Clubberclaw doesn't want to go up on the stump, then maybe they can watch the, the skiffs. You'll come with us? I want to. All right. Because I'm on an adventure, you know? And what if there's something else that needs taken care of? And she winks with the eye that's behind the broken glass. You see three eyes wink at once. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know what, Twig? I'll find you very charming and hope you're not a horrible hag in disguise. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not. I can can be sure of it. Okay. And she winks with her three eyes. Ah, yeah. (laughs) Torbex convinced. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, Okay, uh, Clapperclaw, would you mind taking a look at uh, taking uh, a look after these two skiffs while we investigate the big old stump. What? Sorry, what did you ask? My brain just malfunctioned. If, if, if Clapperclaw <laughs> would be fine staying behind to look after the skiffs while we go uh, investigate the stump. That would probably be the best choice because, to be honest, I should not be going up there. Mm, I told someone I wasn't going to. All right, well, then just stay right here. And we'll but bring your head right you're back. promising that you're going to bring my head back for me? I certainly will. Well, if we okay. can find it, you know. Well, I will think of something I can do for you unless the... So I just watch these gifts, you bring my head back, and there's that's just it? Well, well, no, I mean, if we bring the head back, the skiff thing is really for Twig. Uh, there is a favor we might ask of you, though, if, oh, yeah. you, if you're looking for ideas. Well, we- what is your favorite that you would like? Well, if we bring your head back, you could uh, take us to uh, Downfall. Oh, well, the big thing also that we need is to be taken <clears throat> after we deal with downfall yes. Yes. to uh, go to the. We need, oh, we need, that, no, we need, we need passage. Oh, we need passage yeah. to the other realm. Oh, you want me to go down. back to thither? Well, that's um, that's a lot to ask of someone that has escaped from there. Mm. Could you just take us just just to the edge, and you don't even gotta go in there. Just help us get to there, and then you can go, and then we just shoot out, and you stay behind. <laughs> You know, I don't know how to describe that in a non-gross way. I'm sorry. <laughs> in exchange Squeeze for my head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that's a fair trade in exchange All for All right. My head. Oh, okay. So we got our plans of attack. What What was the confusion about the hags? Which, what, uh, Granny Nightshade, what is her first name? We don't have an, uh, a first name for Granny Nightshade. Oh, shit. What's the other hag then? We've got Bavlorna Blightstraw, okay. Scabatha Nightshade, Endelin Moongrave. <laughs> you, 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 you just said Scabatha. You just said Scabatha Nightshade, <laughs> man. And, we've got, and then we've got Granny Nightshade. Yeah, she's, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> no relation. <laughs> no relation. Hey, everybody. Come on, Sam. What are the chances <laughs> there are two hands with a last name Nightshade? It's actually, listen, over here, it's actually pretty likely, man. I'm That's actually it. shocked there's not a Granny Nightshade Nightshade, right? <laughs> I don't have anything more written down other than that. I don't know what you guys are looking for. All right, we can move on. Oh, you are you like you've been really good at that game? Thank God. It's like fucking you know, boomers. You were tiny tunes. So it was Buster Bunny and Babs Bunny. No relation. Nightshade is the Smith. Of well, actually, it's quite a very coming Nightshade. The hag reunions are massive. Seventh of Nightshade. Her name is my name too. Okay. Yes, it was Scabatha. Let's move on. <laughs> Scabatha. Scabatha. Don't worry, we'll also kill Scabatha for you. That's free of charge. <laughs> I'm sure she also has a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are we climbing the stump now? Is that the next plan? I mean. There are a bunch of rope ladders hanging down from it, so it looks like it'll be pretty easy. 
Okay. Okay. Um, hey guys. Torbeck was hoping while we climbed the stump, you could explain a few things to Torbeck. Mm. Remember at the end of the carnival when they came to get Torbeck and everyone acted confused and you guys said, goodbye, Torbeck, we have a grand adventure that you can't <laughs> go on. And they took Torbeck away and then the rest is very dark and horrifying. Yeah, no, I don't yeah, remember that. Uh, yeah, well, what, yeah. what is the grand adventure? Why are you here? I know that we're looking for a key for a dragon and that's about <laughs> it. Oh. Oh, that's a good point. We never filled you in on the whole thing. Where well, do the hags come into play? We got a lot of rope to climb, so... Sneaky! <laughs> While we are uh, Adam West and Burt Ward our way up there... Uh, now would we'll, be a great time for us to have a non-RP check-in, because I could use it for... Oh, <laughs> to be completely honest. Well, why don't we do it in character for us? We can not <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it all started when we... Uh, Found a small pixie with her wings pulled off. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also uh, a lady that got me merged with her horse. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Let's start from the beginning, all right? Yeah. So. We're um, in horrible debt. Uh, we used to run a carnival. Oh, I was oh, there we for there. that. I keep forgetting about that. Anyway, <laughs> after we you know, uh, willingly disbanded, uh, we uh, lay, we were laying low in Ogway, my hometown, so to speak, and uh, I got a letter from my old uh, associate that he was collecting royalties on all the money I've made for like a decade uh, or two, maybe. Um, anyway, horrible debt to a man you don't want to be in debt to. Uh, and then we found an old warlock named, uh, what was his name, Roslov? Mr. Roslov! Oh, oh, yes. Magic Roslov! Oh, yeah, Mr. Roslov! <laughs> Oh. Hurry up, Rigo! Okay. <laughs> well, you Jack. guys climb very quickly. I'm not used to climbing outside oh, of Spirit Fall. Yeah, he made a mean pie. Is man. this helping you get the story together, Derek, or do you want to do an actual, like, out of character? No, no, no. <laughs> this, is, this is actually probably good. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm going to follow sure. along in my notes. <laughs> I just want to make sure. Step yes. one is debt. So then we, that's exactly right. And that's by the, the transitive debt. property, all of us were in debt as well. Oh, that's right. They no. sort of was, they had some life debt to me for some reason. Clemmy murdered <laughs> Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, through the swamp. Uh, oh, no. So, so Rosloff, right? His patron uh, is uh, this archfey named Zabilna. Yes. Oh, yes. Zabilna. Zabilna. Oh, you may have heard of Zabilna. And she once ruled a, all of Prismere. She did. She did. So Prismere, where we are right now, it was her domain, right? Mm -hmm. And all, you know, he lost contact with her. And, you know, she was basically responsible for everything that he had achieved in life. He was actually in the portrait at, at the end. I don't know if you recall that, but there was a beautiful archfey. That was Zabilna. And then you mm -hmm. saw Twig and you mm. saw Rosloff and maybe and we saw the uh, old kettle steam. You know they were on that portrait. <laughs> anyway, uh, he isn't he isn't that kettle steam. Oh, well, anyway, uh, <laughs> that's besides oh, the point. All right, anyway, just keep going. So, uh, he's getting up there in years, right? And you know he's he's feeling like he's going to pass on soon. And the last wish that he has, and you know while he maintains his mortal coil is. He wants to speak to Zabilna and reach out and feel her presence again. And uh, so uh, he offered a quest to us where if we could free Zabilna from whatever kind of you know, trap she was in or, or, or predicament she was in so that she could reconnect with old Roslov, then he would leave us his entire a sizable fortune. To fix the debt! To pay back the debt, and I'm sure we would have plenty more on top that we could all split. With myself getting a larger portion, of course, being the leader of this operation. I don't think we agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't forget Hootsie's portion, too. Oh, Hootsie, you're doing a great job. Remember, just right, left, right, left. You're doing great. <laughs> um, so, anyway, we go through the swamp. Uh, right before we get to the carnival, we see it up ahead, but then we come across this pixie who had had her wings like cut off her body. Oh. And she was bleeding out terrible, and Bricko tried to heal her, but it wasn't closing the wounds. She didn't make it. It no. was almost like whatever cut the wings was cut with some sort of magical something that wouldn't let it close up. 
Anyway, she died, and then we went to the carnival. We bought tickets, and uh, no, well, I guess we didn't buy tickets. We made a pact for some tickets. I purchased and, uh, a ticket. Oh, Frost, I don't know. Anyway, Torbic I couldn't lie. was there he for that. Yeah, we ran into you. Remember been... Guy's Night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember Guy's Night. <laughs> you know, that's that's ironic. Yeah, 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 I mean, obviously, it's ironic. You don't have to mention it. goes without yeah, saying. It was ironic. It was ironic. Oh, Torbic, you missed us. We all we all stayed in drag. You know, after Guy's Night was over. Even though it was ironic, and we did a great show. It was still ironic, Rick, okay? You understand? It was ironic. You got Frosty in drag. Drag after Guys Night Two. <laughs> Long story <laughs> short, while we were there, we learned that um, this Covenant Hags had taken over uh, Prismere, and uh, for us to help Zabilna, we gotta, I guess, take care of the Hags, and uh, that's where we're at. And we know that this fella here, Clabberclaw. Well, I mean, you were there for that, that he can get us to the next zone. Oh, he's way down there now. Oh, where does the fairy dragon come into play? Oh, he, I don't know. He's, he's just, he was just there. He was... Now, the fairy dragon was on, here on a quest, a mission from uh, 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 the, the Taking, Summer yeah. Queen. She was investigating Prismia after losing contact with uh, Zabilna. And apparently this, we're, we're on the verge of some terrible war of some kind. I'm sure we won't get mixed up in it uh, <laughs> but anyway he he basically wrote all of Prismere off and said it's gone ain't nothing of worth here besides a couple of gross hags you know but anyway we want to save him and help him and he saved because Hootie. we do want to favor well. for the queen of all the fae and maybe we can turn that favor in in the future for our benefit. Oh, help Jingle Jangle get the key, save the dragon, favor with the fae, kill the hang, save Zabilna, pay off the debt. Torbeck's caught up! Exactly right! Hey. Hey. He's got it! Hey. Hey. Oh, pretty good <laughs> summation! <laughs> We also we also promised the uh, centaur. Uh, yeah, and there was some side quests that we uh, did. <laughs> and we'll keep him around as long as our quest log doesn't feel good. But if they do, I'm the ba- I'm abandoning them. If you see an individual who looks stricken by grief, who probably was sucked into a mirror by a, a big lady, then oh. uh, uh, make sure you save him too. Okay. Uh, I feel like we're missing something. Well, it'll come up if it's important. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I guess you got sucked to hell and we're experimented on for years, apparently. So we we gotta don't go have to talk about that. Oh, and I mean, you were also there for this mysterious, strange man in tart pants and the barn owl. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We really don't have to talk about <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, and then there was that uh, that strange fellow with the big, the mustachioed fellow who was uh, a, a servant of the top pants man. With a, with a big beard. Right? With a big kind beard. Of dwarf looking film. Oh yeah, it was kind of dwarf-like of some variety. He was dwarf-esque. Yeah, dwarf askew, they might say. <laughs> uh, and it is around this time that you, um, that you make your way to the very top of the stump and Down you begin to <laughs> <laughs> you begin to pull yourself over the fog is thick here and I need you all to roll on the naughty list oh, oh no is that a d100 no it's a d20 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Torment got a 5 Grammy got a 19 oh Gideon got a 14 <laughs> We didn't play a one shot card. Rico got a five. Rico got a five. Frost? I got a six. We <laughs> should. Oh, shucks, I gotta say. Oh, we have two fines. Yeah, Rico um, too. Yeah. Um, um, Torbeck, re roll yours. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna leave he, this one he for Mike. His, oh, okay. Torbeck got a two. Sweet. Okay. Um, everyone around you looks like candy, and you have a sweet tooth. <laughs> the, moment, the, moment, the moment this happens, I just turn and I start licking Rick off. Yeah. Well, you're actually climbing directly behind him. Oh, so he's yeah. right <laughs> Like, so, I'll, I'll be climbing and I'll say, oh, giddy. No, you, you won't because. Have you been doing squats? No, you won't because you can only speak in song. 
Yeah, right, Gideon, have you been doing squats? Oh, I feel a tingle in my toes. <laughs> Gideon. Yes? You hear the uh, dulcet tones of Grico's uh, melody as your entire mouth goes numb and you cannot stop drooling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have been doing squat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gideon, stop! I'm right behind you. <laughs> what are you? You feeling all right, Gideon? Uh, oh, this is just unfair. Uh, you got at least having a stroke. Uh, <laughs> Can someone roll a d100 for me, please? Oh. Look at that big boy! Two. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Wow. <laughs> What, what the fuck? Wait, what oh, is the oh, God. For somebody to ask me to do that. Two is the best fucking. It's so fucking. I actually bad. thought it was going to land on one. It was, it was like, like really angry. Two to the one. can be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number. It's the number one. Um, Kremi. Oh, no. You were overcome by hi- psychedelic hallucinations. <laughs> oh, fuck. Frost. Hmm. Mm. Mm. You believe you are turning into a were person. <laughs> you are not. The moon hangs high yeah. in the sky <laughs> as the fog clears on this stump. You've all crested the top of it. As you watch, uh, as you look out and you see that this is clearly a camp. Um, a place uh, you can see areas where um, the cooking was done for a large group of people. You see tents set up, beddings, um, places to uh, to work out, uh, target dummies for, for archery practice and, and melee combat. In the very cent- uh, center, tiled, uh, piled, sitting atop a pile of thousands of trinkets, stolen items from all over the uh, Hither, you see a makeshift throne, a throne for the brigand prince of Prismere. Yeah. And as you cross the top of this stump, all of you feel that strange fey magics infiltrate your body. And it's you happening. see the fog move away from the moon as it illuminates almost like a spotlight down on top of all of you. As Twig steps forward, ah, I don't feel so good, Mr. Crummy. And she spins around and falls to the ground dead. Oh, no. And just as quickly as she lands, you begin to see her body change. Oh, Oh, my God. What am I looking at? As she gets longer and she begins to sprout feathers. Uh, Her Her feet become... Um, more spindly, and you see um, talons begin to form as her as her feet um, spread out into three uh, bird claws. Her arms slowly flap, and where her arms had been, there are now wings. As a very small owl sits there in front of you, as her head turns three hundred and sixty degrees. Oh, I'm getting really dizzy. Mm. Guys, I think I took a little too much of something. What happened to me? Twig, Twig looks like a fucking owl. Is uh, there somebody else seeing that? Twig definitely is an owl. What oh happened to me, Hoot? Are, are you having a stroke? I don't know. Oh! 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 Pick up Gricko and like, flip you over and begin lightly gnawing on your leg. <laughs> I look over the edge and I, it feels like we're rocketing away from the ground. Oh god, guys, I'm getting vertigo. Oh fuck, I don't do well with that. Oh my god! Uh, Gideon? Yeah. Do, do, those, do those chains come off? I didn't realize what day of the, the, the year or the month it was. Um, yeah, yeah, you come off, but I use them to do all my stuff. You'll need to bind me. Bind me quick. Well, 
Tom Bank Storm! Twig! I don't know what's happening to you, but when you have to run for Strain Frost, Strain Frost, when you can, make a way saving throw! And uh, I feel it. Twig, Twig tries to run, but she's not used to her new Aarakocra legs, and she oh. face plants. I can't run! Frost! Hoot! I can't run! Hoot! Quick, 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 quickly, Gideon. Oh, uh, you uh, <laughs> Gideon, tell me. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Why are you doing this bit? We don't have much time. Batman at night. Batman at night. Please don't make stars. Licking my feet. Uh, uh, the steam uh, engine kicks uh, in as the chains whir to life and they wrap around Frosty, assuming that you don't make a strength saving throw. Or I would uh, uh, I would want to be restrained as quickly as possible, thinking that I've endangered all of my friends with my boom, transformation. Steam fires out <laughs> from the manacles. <laughs> <laughs> Good work, Gideon. Yes, yes. Torbeck, there's a reason I understand your transformation. And it's because I am a werecat. The moment you deliver this line, you realize that Torbeck has your tail and is lightly chewing on you. <laughs> Frost tastes like candy for us. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's transforming. Oh, no. You can get your Twigs just flopping around as a tiny pygmy owl on the ground. Oh my god. <laughs> he looks like a tootsie roll. <laughs> <laughs> I want to come down. I want to come down. I want to come down. Twig, please, 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 what I've done to you! Look at you! You're you're a fucking beast! What? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! I'm good, man. Hey, Greg, I did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really flattered. I didn't know you guys were paying attention, but. It's the front. 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 I walk up to it and I look for the sack. A roll investigation check. What sack are you looking for? The the filth. Oh. Oh, oh, the filthy sack that stole our souls or whatever, the hag sack. Sure, right. twisting it wouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna pick up I'll twig. twist it! Does my curse only apply to people? Uh, no, I would say it applies to everything. You okay. look, you feel like you're on top of Candy Mountain. Oh, uh, I would like to <laughs> twist. Candy Mountain, Torbeck. It's Candy Mountain. I would Mountain. like to twist, and I would also like to withdraw two dreads to purge the singing. Okay. Oh. So I'm still, I'm just taking on a dread, but, uh, I still don't do a terrible... That's clever. Thank you. I like that. While you're investigating, uh, I stop. Nine. I stop chewing on Frost's tail, and I walk over to Gideon, <clears> and I look at your bicep, and I say, "Ooh, candy apple!" You, uh, you begin to draw blood, but to you, <laughs> but man. to you, it looks like a delicious strawberry compote. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is clearly a candy-filled candy. Oh, Torbeck's lucky day! Oh my god, Torbeck's a monster too. Get, I'm sorry. You might have to kill everybody. Uh, <laughs> you might have to kill everybody. No, what the fuck? Oh, fuck, why, 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 why are you buying me? It's looking at my blood. <laughs> You uh, you look through all of the trinkets, and the sack that you're looking for, you are unable to find. No, uh, you do, no. however, find a couple of other things. Tobek, 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 stop licking people. Three times on the D100 table. Uh, was that? Three times D100. Ooh, Greco, stop Tobek's bag of candy. Oh. That's cocked. Right? Oh. 
Three times. We gotta do this. And yes, you've purged the singing. 39. You, you, 39. Uh, as you're looking I through this, the no you um you feel your your voice catching your throat and uh, like, for I'm some unexplainable reason the singing stops. Oh. And for my new uh twist curse, I got a six. I believe that the oh, well, 76. 76. You believe you are turning into a wear person, you are not. <laughs> I'm like digging around. <clears throat> Guys, <clears throat> I didn't find the F sack. Uh. But just in this moment, <laughs> I realize Frost is right, it is the full moon. And we are eternal war, the wear cats and the wear rats. And we're rats. <laughs> we're rats. <laughs> We're the rats. <laughs> oh no! It must have happened when I bit him at some point. Oh. He's a were rat. They're the rats of Prismian. I get on all fours. I just start bearing around, uh, and potentially you throw gathering. Out and three trinkets yep. fly towards you, Gideon. Uh-huh. Uh, what numbers did you get? Thirty-nine, seventeen, and seventy-six. Thirty-nine. You find a vial of viscous liquid labeled Fomorian spit. Do not drink. <laughs> oh, simple syrup! <laughs> <laughs> no, the, no, the spits are in quotes. I chew the whole thing and I bleed from my mouth. <laughs> oh, uh, we'll address that in a second. What were the other numbers? 17. 17. Uh, you also get a sheet of music that goblins find upsetting when they hear it played or sung. <laughs> sheet of music that goblins hate. Collection of baby teeth in a tiny wooden box. Jesus. Oh. I am just saying, oh, I must form a defensive barrel. <laughs> <laughs> You're all in terrible danger. And I'm going to be digging into, I'm going to try to dig a burrow through the, uh, all the trinkets and scattering a bunch all over the place. Don't let him get away. He'll spread the curse. This, hey. this is a lesson, isn't it? Huh. We're all monsters on the inside. We're not that different from Tolbeck. Well, we? monsters on the outside, man. We're, we're just <laughs> normally monsters. No, I mean, you're, you're literally a horrible green monster. Like, hey. it's come out, out of your neck, and he's a horrible wet cat, and he's a horrible wet rat, and he's a... <laughs> he's Torbeck! Um, it's only a matter of time. Torbeck. You hear Kremi yelling. Frost and Gricko are maddened with their... Um, imaginary transformation into where people um Gideon's uh spit is flying everywhere as you're staring at this veritable smorgasbord of candy in front of you as you begin to crunch down on the glass and you begin to drink down this spit which in this moment tastes very sweet and thick and syrupy to you and then things begin to change as clarity a clarity that you have never experienced before in your life overtakes you. Almost as if you are given the gift of a true sight and you can see things as they are. You see a strange purple haze clouded around the heads of everyone atop this hill. Twig, Frost, Kremi, Gideon. You even see the faint outlines of it or outlines of it around yourself as well but more than anything it is the presence that you feel inside of your mind an entity someone wholly different than yourself the voice that you fear is not just a voice and it is there knocking at the door <laughs> You are watching out from inside of your own body. And though you can hear this entity, this other side to yourself, this other person inside of your body, you can't seem to interact with them. 
and you hear another voice all together. We are coming for you, Torbeck. We will have you. We know where you are, and you will not separate yourself from him. Not any time soon. Thirteen, Torbeck. Keep that number at the forefront of your mind. It will be important. Until we meet again. <laughs> and we will meet again. And just as quickly as you hear the voice, you almost like in slow motion, you begin to see everything returning to Candy. The faint knocking at the door, the, um, the metaphorical knocking at the door of this other entity inside your body completely ebbs away and his voice calling out to you to let him out, to let him overtake you is completely wiped away as your mind is no longer as clear as it had been. The purple hazes surrounding uh, all of your friends fades and all you see is a candy gummy gator. A, uh, a Gideon Pez dispenser, his head <laughs> flopping around this way or that with candy shooting out of his neck. Candy. And I put a rock in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go, and I look over the edge, and I still see it like. <laughs> oh, I throw myself on my hands and knees. <sighs> I peek over the ledge again, and I <clears throat> and I just puke. <laughs> 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 uh, well, we have enjoyed a short rest in meeting uh, Clapper Claw. Yeah. And all of that. Oh. Uh, so as that happens, as I'm burrowing in, I will say, I'm the giant rat who makes all of the rules. Oh. And I'm going to turn into a large spectral <clears throat> version of a rat ogre, which is like a big rat monstrosity. It's almost ape-like. Uh, and I was going to take the, the stats of a stench cow. <laughs> so that is what? that is going to be very stinky in that pile. Um, another thing to add to that, uh, you have one use of Dimension Door. Me? Yes. Well, that's pretty <laughs> fucking good. The that's a fourth level spell, folks. <laughs> you were keeping track of hope. That's pretty intense. Do I feel like I have like a, a, a time limit? Um, until it's used. Oh. Okay. Mm, mm, candy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna use it to get more candy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, as I'm digging, thinking that I'm this uh, big rat king, were-rat king monstrosity, I'm going to be l trying to basically build out a burrow in this pile of stuff and try to find things that, I guess, like, as a, as a little rodent, like a creature would try to basically uh, gather and things that I would th find valuable. Uh, I would say roll another uh, investigation check. Okay. I'm going to try to get a good one this time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna twist it. I'm gonna twist it. Okay, seventeen. All right, all right. Okay, seventeen. Um, I will say you, you don't find any additional trinkets, um, but you are able to going through this uh, just with the entity that you have turned into. You have an unnatural ability to quickly scan trinkets and find uh, anything you're looking for for the sake of brevity, um, and you are able to to see that there does not appear to be any um, stag skulls atop this mound. Um, you are, however, able to find a bag of truffles. Stitched into the side oh. of the canvas bag is um, an embroidered name, Jingle Jangle, yeah. with a key hanging um, around the J. Um, it was clearly done by hand and with love. Uh, it is old and well used. It, appears to be something that Jingle Jangle has made made many, many moons ago and keeps with her all the time to gather up her truffles. The inside of it is actually is veritably filled with the truffles that she'd been harvesting on the day similar to, but uh, very distinct from Wednesday. And um, 
it seems like none of them had been eaten. It had been stolen and then just thrown atop this pile. Um, but you do see stains from Truffle's past um, as well as sewn into the linings all around this canvas bag are keys of varying colors, shapes, um, weights, sizes. I'll be digging through and I'll like, and trash, 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 trash. <laughs> oh, uh, fuck, I'm glad Agden is dead. <laughs> <laughs> trash, trash, trash. Uh, and you also find a ledger, which seems to be a, a well-kept ledger of everything that was ever stolen and from who it was stolen from oh, and shit. its current location. <gasps> trash! <laughs> do, do I... <laughs> oh, a ledger with detailed records. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 this could be useful for Biggie Cheese. <laughs> trash, trash, trash. And that's what you find. What does everybody else I'm, I'm in my burrow now. Uh, I'd like to uh, ch- try and look around for any signs of the other herring gone. If I can, t- I like see. Just look around. Like obviously there were like fifty, but presumably up like on this precipice where yeah. we're at. Uh, and I mean, see it's if very I clear there. that there was a um, a, a civilization of herring gone up here. Mm-hmm. That uh, many families and and groups of them <clears throat> lived up here. And you're doing this with a frost strap to you like a baby Bjorn. Oh yeah, no, he's just getting dragged behind me. Mm, okay. Yeah. Probably on the ground. Uh, I would like you to roll a survival (laughs) check at disadvantage because you are dragging Frost, who is um, ruining any uh, tracks or other things that you might be able to see. That is Frost ruining everything. What are you doing, Frost, as you're being dragged (laughs) behind (laughs) Gideon? I'm totally restrained, so uh, I'm just. You can um, still speak. Yeah, no, I, I've gone, um, like, feral dormant, and I'm just looking around with crazy eyes, looking at the moon, looking up at the back of Gideon as I'm being dragged, uh, hoping that I don't kill my friends, and feeling the rage and adrenaline hunger they're in. I just, I'm not sure why I still look like Frost, but I'm still ready for the transformation and grateful. And that, you know that it, it should be coming. Yeah, it's, it's in any it's, second in, now. In, in just a moment. Any just moment. a moment. So just, and then that moment passed. Well, in the next moment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, and I'm then just, that moment passes. I'm just uh, uh, at the top of the roller coaster for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in paralysis. But because I'm restrained, I'm like... <laughs> um, as soon as I finish out my burrow... Given the pisser I had with Let's Frost. Let's finish this oh, first, oh, yeah, yeah. and then we'll get back yeah. to that. Oh, um, uh, I, it was a 15, and then it was a 3. Oh. No. <laughs> uh, you look around, and you you are able to see that there are clear footsteps. And you imagine that you you have the track that they, the, t- they, the path they took. It's very clear. They were up here, and they left. And you begin to follow those tracks. Uh, and it takes you about 10 minutes before you realize you've been following your own tracks in a circle <laughs> around the entirety of this thing over and over again. And that any tracks that would have been left at this point have now been wiped away or overstepped by your own. Uh, as you eventually make your way over to Kremi, what are you doing? I'm slowing my hands and knees. <laughs> <laughs> I wipe my nose off. I was just, okay, just, I'm gonna try to position myself, like, pointing away from the edge, and I'm just gonna close my eyes and kind of shakily crawl on my hands and knees until I feel like I'm, like, at least 20 feet away. And then I'm gonna take my hat off and put it over my snout and try to cover my eyes and just, like, wait for it to be over. <laughs> just try to wait out the bad trip. Kermy. <laughs> okay, you do that. Torbeck. Um, I would find a good-sized rock, um... And uh, it's very clearly just a giant jawbreaker. And I, clearly. I go walk over to my candy throne uh-huh. and I sit on it and begin to lick the jawbreaker and enjoy uh, my new station as royalty. The proportions are from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> so, so you can visualize that. Uh, you you were doing that as um, Twig is making her way over towards you, Grico. She has um, gotten back up onto onto her feet. And she is slowly getting used to 
being a pygmy owl. As she uh, creeps along, she occasionally flaps her wings and flies up maybe like um, a foot off of the ground before she gets scared that she's up because she's afraid of heights. She's, oh, and then hoot, and then she crashes back into the ground. But she does this a few times until she finally gets over to you. It's almost like one of those, um, what are those games where like the things are flying at you and you're trying to dodge out of the way? What are those called? Oh, you mean like like Temple Run? Or yeah, like, those oh, kinds of things. Something. And I think so Beat as, Saber for some reason. Yeah, it's similar yeah, to that, it, but yeah. like, oh, um, you're just tossing trinket after trinket, and so she's dodging out of the way um, and turning into a game as she sings a little song to herself and makes her way towards you. Uh, noticing the ledger, she pulls that aside, uh, and she is resting on top of it, kicking her little owl feet as she slowly reads through the ledger. Um, as like Twig is freaking out, I'm imagining that Hootsie would kind of like seeing that she's turned into an owl, she would like uh, Hootsie would nudge Twig, and just like Gricko had taught her, like left foot, right foot, left foot, right foot, like she would basically walk forward, even though she has like a little, she's using her some of her owl farts. He was trying to be teaching her how to walk like an owl. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that is how she ended up getting to the point that she was I able to start you. making her way on her own. Uh, ooh, and all the ooh, while, Hootsie ooh, is watching ooh, uh, ooh. Mama Owl be- bearing her as um, Twig eventually pulls the ledger over towards Hootsie and she opens it towards the middle of it, flops her tiny pygmy owl body on top of it, and begins to start reading through. And she will, uh, that would have been after she just looks at everyone freaking out and she'll just roll her eyes. <laughs> and she'll go to Twig. Uh, and yeah, no, I was, so yeah, as long as Twig has it. I was going to basically also just trying to find a way to get away from Gricko and in the hands to advancing the plot. Oh yeah, don't so worry. That, yeah, okay, okay, I good. You. I'm glad. I'm I glad. Hootsie is the only reliable narrator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is around this time as you are tossing trinket after trinket, Torbeck. Um, some of your teeth are now uh, half missing as you've been gnawing on and uh, licking at this jawbreaker. Uh, The rock has been grinding down a few of your teeth unevenly. Um, This is not what we're supposed to be listening to. Torbeck is unsurprised. so only like one of your front two teeth has gnawed down, a couple in the back. Um, it's it's very haphazard. Uh, Kremi, you are rocking and shaking on the side of, of this um, this stump. Gideon, you're dragging uh, Frost around. And all of this is happening as a warm breeze rushes by. And as it does, the sound of song is mixed in with it. You only hear as the, as the, the breeze rushes by your your ears it is clearly a uh, a soprano a soprano voice as it sings a soft lullaby and for a moment you feel dizzy and warm almost as if you've just woken up from a very long nap abruptly and as your eyes refocus torbeck you realize that you are gnawing on a rock no not again Frost- that moment of transformation was never going to come. You are not a werecat. You've never been a werecat. Why does this keep happening to you? And all of you <laughs> begin to feel yourselves coming back into your person as something on the wind washes away the the fey magics it's that like have a overcome you. Soprano, mm-hmm. soprano voice. Yeah. Can it be something like? Oh, when you're down and you're looking for some cheering up, then just head right up to the Candy Mountain Cave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was in it was in it was in Sylvan. Yeah. So you don't know yeah. what it said, yeah. <laughs> but you imagine it was probably something similar to that. That was the melody, for sure. As, as I'm digging, I'll be like, she called me Mr. Boombastic, say me fantastic and world, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then all of the trinkets and the horribly fortified burrow that I've made collapse on top of me. <laughs> Am I actually looking at the moon, or was that an illusion? That, that was an illusion of the moon. Get in. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 <coughs> oh, it's over Your key there. Chad what? shirt is covered in spit. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> 
Well, that's can, gross. Can, can you release me from these chains? Oh, yeah, man. Are you doing okay now? I, I never was. If I ever tell you that I'm a werecat moving forward, <laughs> please don't believe me. I, I, you're the most believable guy I know. I mean, if you say, hey, I'm a werecat, look out, bind me up just like that other time. I got to wrap me in chains. Next time, no matter what I say, I'm not a werecat. <laughs> I cannot wait for the next time. <laughs> That's gonna bite us in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. If you heard, sure. I won't harm you. I'll just continue to think I'm a werecat. I will say everything that I could in order to convince you of the fact, but there's no danger. <laughs> All right. Well. That sounds good to me. I turn around, I whip the chains, yes. and they'll like they'll ripple out and kind of oh. bounce him up to, uh. to straighten him on his feet, and then fall uh, fall to the wayside. So you're now free. <laughs> that was that was the haggiest laugh you've ever actually done. Like you've done them like trying on purpose. No, that was a, I'm so was terrified. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like it's gonna be like the bee situation. Frosty's gonna be running at me as a werecat. I'm be like, oh well, he's. Said he wouldn't do anything to wow. Oh, do you fuck. need help? Yeah. No, the rest of this campaign is Nikki figuring out how to actually get me to become a worker. Yeah. That's that's why Nikki in real life is Maggie's fuck. Baba Yaga. <laughs> As things begin to settle atop the stump, you um you see the trinkets just piled around all over the place. Um, Torbeck. Though, you're, though you don't regain the clarity that you had in that moment of drinking the Fomorian spit, um, that moment where you felt like you could see through the veil of glamour that, that uh, infuses everything in this place, you remember it. You remember the purple haze that was swirling around the forms of yourself and your friends. You remember the voice that spoke to you. And I need you to roll a d20 for me, please. Okay. Just straight. 17. Ooh. Now that the, the magics that were warping your mind have ebbed, you recognize this voice. It's not just the voice you heard in your dreams the night prior. It is also a voice that you had heard strapped to a table that you don't remember the words that were being said to you. You remember faint bits and pieces of um, people, beings milling about you, poking and prodding you, treating you like an animal. And the way that they, begin to, they began to cower and stumble over their words as this entity walked into the, into the room. As this voice captured all of their attention as this voice ordered them about and they did not they did not wait more than a moment to respond the way the tension in the room rose upon his entrance into it and though you could not see his face though it was obscured by the contraptions that you were attached to and the bed that you were strapped down to all you could see was the dark ceiling which was nothing more than the, the ceiling of a cave, some sort of subterranean room that you were locked in. Mm. But that voice, you remember it now. It was there, not just once, but multiple times. How many times you're unsure, but you know with certainty that you have heard that voice before. Oh. Um. Guys, yes. Uh, Torbeck had what alcoholics might refer to as a moment of clarity. <laughs> <Been there. laughs> uh, uh, what? Well, what? I mean, uh, in, in the absolute chaos, Torbeck ate what he thought was simple syrup and is pretty sure now was just spit. <laughs> <laughs> but, either, but either way, Tormex heard that voice before. The voice from the dream. 
You talking about that uh, that dream we had with the doctor? Yeah, but the menacing voice, the scary voice that everyone seemed to cower from. Tight pants. Oh, oh in throne. the throne room, on the fucking throne. Yes, that person has visited Torbeck numerous times. What did he say to you? Uh, in I, what in what context and circumstance? Wh- well, when Torbeck was strapped to the table, Torbeck can't really remember, but during the moment, he said, We're coming for you. Oh, fuck! And something about the number 13. Mm. Well, that has a three in it. So you telling me you probably followed... Oh, God. Well, that's what Torbeck was worried about back at the inn. I like to slightly approach the edge a little bit and I look down to see if I can see anybody. I actually want to look down and see if I still see old uh, crab hands down there. Like just hanging out uh, by you, the skiffs. You look down and it is very foggy. There is almost a layer of fog that swirls around this stump. But as the winds move it, you are able to peek down to bits and pieces of the uh, of the docks below. And you eventually see where you had left Clapperclaw. And uh, they're clearly sitting there dangling their feet over the edge as they um, throw rocks into the water. Um, occasionally you can hear uh, their voice drift up on the wind. They're singing and humming and telling stories. Uh, talking to themselves. Just normal kid shit. Torbeck wants to help all of you, but Torbeck is worried. He's put you in danger. Oh, this is going to throw a wrench in the whole operation. Why? I will sk- I will scamper out like my lower half is in the pile of uh, trinkets and I'll finally uh, scramble out. Uh... And I will look at Kremi and I'll say, I mean, if the big bad guy underground is the one what experimented on Torbeck or commissioned it or was part of it, then we'll just gotta fuck him up like we're gonna do with the hags. Just adding one more person to our list. Yeah, man. I mean, the only reason he would want him back is if he knows (laughs) uh, what they did to him made him... uh, powerful enough to be an issue. So this guy shows up, we'll do the same thing we do to everybody else. That guy didn't look like some kind of just hag. I mean, this dude was sitting on a throne on the ground. I mean, who knows if he's some sort of equivalent to the fake queen that we're talking about. Like, we have no idea. Oh. Well, Torbeck's sitting on a throne right now, man. Yeah, you know. The throne I mean, is only as good as, as the people that you rule. I mean, you know, a, oh. a monarch is really only... As, as powerful as their people. And they're... They're saying Dormack is still worthless? No. <laughs> Here's a horrifying thought. If they were <laughs> able to make two years happen in the span of a night, well, I guess who knows how long. Years, he said, right? So at least two years. I would say, just looking at Torbeck, he looks to be at least five years older than the last time you left him. A good amount of years. And they have access to whatever the fuck all that is? You think they're not doing it to other fucking bugbears or whatever else? That's a good point, Krimi. I mean, what if they get a bigger Torbeck to send after us? <gasps> we may have to deal with that. Okay. And... I might just have a grim imagination. But how many times, Torbeck, do you fall off the Harris wheel and survive almost miraculously? Oh, uh, Torbeck can't count that high. What if Torbeck has, like, some crazy resilience and other people would die under such circumstances to put all that stuff in them. And Tobek survived it when others don't. That's a fair point. I mean, they just strapped that huge contraption to him. I wouldn't just slide on anybody. You know, it would be awfully fucking coincidental you show up the same night we do. Or the same carnival we Otherwise, why would they follow him if they got, like, legions of, of bugbears or whatever? Like, what, why does Tobit matter? Man, that's a good point. I also want to know how... 
how much Mr. Light and Mr. Witch knew about the people who took you, Torbeck. They probably knew everything. I hate those guys. Why do we even... We shouldn't have even given them back the thing. It's possible that you were just the first, or that Gricko's theory is correct. But this is something of a, uh, a wrench in our plans. Uh, we, you made it sound so simple earlier. Do this, do this, do this. Get out and get the money that will eventually allow us to pay for our debt. But what are these hags, these three hags, know of the voice that you heard? Or of your abilities, or of any of this additional information? Are, are, they, are they going to be looking for you too, or are they going to know anything at all uh, they're we're in a very unknown place and that makes me very nervous uh, Torbeck is extra concerned that they might be in Torbeck's brain what if the things Torbeck knows or learns ends up in the wrong place he, look here's the thing Torbeck if somebody come <laughs> Calm, calm down. Look, <laughs> I don't mean to freak you out. All right. Oh God. I don't have to look yeah, hoochie, hoochie. Uncle Tobad. <laughs> Uncle Tobad needs a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Tobad needs a snuggle session. Squishy snuggle session. Oh, there we go. And hoochie. <laughs> <laughs> and Hoots is gonna like basically act as like an emotional support uh, dog <laughs> or stuffed animal and like basically kind of turn into like a squishy like plush toy or like chunky dog but as an, as an owl bear Torbeck for Torbeck. Be very gentle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she'll be genuinely happy and snuggly and you know, uh, nestle in there. Torbeck, I have a few additional words of comfort for you. First of all, I was frustrated after you were able to attack us. Uh, not as yourself, but when you showed up again in the cabin and you were your other self, uh, you were very powerful, but I was disappointed that I was not better prepared, that I did not able was not able to contribute more to that situation, for I am quite learned about the mind. When we have a chance to rest, now, now is not the time, but when we have a chance to sit down and chat, Torbeck, I may be able to uh, tidy a little bit, to uh, shuffle through and perhaps perceive something that you cannot. Okay, Frost. I'm willing to work with you on this. There's much we can learn together. And, you know, I'll have... Uh, you know, maybe it's a little foolish. I've been accused of being a fool... Uh, once or twice or thrice or four eyes or five eyes. A day. A day. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but, but, <laughs> oh, but, <laughs> okay, I'm trying to stay Let's not distracted. On. Oh, Coochie, you're doing so nice. Oh, by the way, I found the truffles of old Jingle Jangle. Oh. But we were on the right path. I bet that, you know, it doesn't matter if nobody knows nothing about this this barn owl fella or his, his dwarfman and then anything else is going around here. But, oh, you, you know who I bet does is Zabilna. And so if Zabilna, who's the wise and benevolent and all-knowing queen of this place, she seems to be like the only one who knows what's going on around here. Even the 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 uh, Sir Talavar was that his name? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sir Talavar said, "Oh, uh, Azabilna, like there's a whole Fey realm here, and Azabilna's uh, not available. Let's ride off this whole area." So she's a big deal. She and so why don't we? It's probably just going to be her problem. We'll just tell her, "Hey, you handle it. We'll go home. It'll be fine." I'm just worried about this being a problem well before we get to solve it. That's all. Well, this is so it. unfortunate. <clears throat> you see his twig is now herself. Still roughly the same size as a, as a pygmy owl, but uh, she is nestled in the pages of this book. Um, her broken glasses askew on her face as she's reading through um, this ledger. Claws head isn't here. Is that a ledger? Yes, that was yep. gonna. Oh, can may I may I see this? Nope. 
<laughs> oh, uh, does it say where it is? Yep. Does it happen to mention the old F sack? Nope. Uh, <sighs> filthy sack? Nope. Uh, bag of, bag of dreams? Oh, soul bag. Soul nope. bag. Mem- oh, sack of dreams. Nope. Memory container? Memory nope. pouch. Can you nope. just read read it to us in order, and if it has any sort of value corresponding, debits, credits, this, these kinds of ledger fodder things? Um, sure. It's interesting because this only goes back so far as the very day that Sabilna disappeared. There's not a single page in here from before. Do you know what that means? That they were enabled by the lack of a powerful and ruler. And they started the on the day that Zabilna disappeared. That, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. That yeah. doesn't seem relevant. When, when the government collapses, they started robbing people and looting, yeah. So, that's interesting. Why? Oh, I don't know. I just found it interesting. Do you find it interesting because you uh, had an expectation that it was some time after well, Zabilna fell that they, this all started, or that it was well, so? I was uh, thinking to myself, immediate. you know, the rules here specifically say, is it specifically or a specifically? It's specifically. A specifically. A sp- that's what I thought. <laughs> it it is specifically says in here that um, yeah. not in here. It's it, it specifically says in the rules of this place. That's why he said it specifically, and it says in this place that you can't steal what belongs to other people. Yes. And he was stealing. Yes. Yeah, because... breaking the law. Yeah. Oh. oh, and there's no right? Zabilna to enforce the law. And Zabilna made those rules for the here, you know? Yes. For hither, thither, and yon, which were not called that at the time. Well, it could still be intact, though. What? Well, it could be intact, right? Like, maybe you got a horribly fake curse, but where the culmination of that horrible curse, you know, because it's dead. So, like, maybe oh. just had a little bit of lag time, and we were the instrument of the fey magic. Of his mm. uh, just dessert, so to Oh, yeah, we just kind of doled it out, a little dollop of dole. Kind of like the threads of fate working in mysterious ways. I don't know ways. what you're saying yeah. right now, but what I will say oh. is what I know what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is this. I think Sabilna kept him from stealing. And in the moment Sabilna was gone, he could steal all of a sudden. So we could break these rules, these uh, three yeah. rules to rule by. None of them apply I anymore. Don't know. No. Not that we should. Not I, that we should. I actually like Gideon's theory that uh, all Zabilna's been, that, that has happened to Zabilna is that she's been slowed. Her influence is still perhaps uh, pervasive in this area. If you were to s- steal, and I'm tempted to look at all of these trinkets and remember, look at that ledger. it's not stealing if he's dead, and all of his next of kin don't come to claim anything. Hey, rabbits! Yeah, where where do they all go? I don't know, man. Fifty of them. I thought I picked up the trail before, but it turns out I was just following Frosty getting dragged on the ground. Oh, l- let's see if there's any burrows in this stump to see if there's like some sort of subterranean stumpian city. All right, the- go ahead. It's very clear to see there isn't. Oh, oh. it's literally just a stump. <laughs> Twig. <gasps> yeah, Frost. You are a uh, very intelligent brownie. Thank you. I, uh,. Hear the logic of your words, and I Ooh, propose I like that. that we all find ourselves a handful of trinkets that have no owners. They may come in handy. That's actually not a bad idea, because I've given you a lot of stuff for free. Most people won't do that here, so you might want to have some monies. And well, well, back eight one. Sure. Take That's your okay. share. Take your share. Get paid back. Well. Because you're not giving it to me. Well, Torbeck's kind of giving it to you because it's kind of all his stuff. Oh, uh, here's, here's what that's I propose. That's true, Torbeck. Never mind, I can't ask. That's rude. Torbeck has had an idea. What's your idea, Torbeck? Torbeck would like to gift all of Torbeck's friends from amongst his newly acquired treasure. Oh, that's great. I hope all. Four of you guys and Hootsie enjoy your new gifts. Twig, you are Torbeck's best friend, too. Do you mean it? Torbeck does. Wow, no one's ever called Twig their best friend before except for 
Pig Junior, but I'm Maid Pig Junior, so she has to see that. <laughs> no one's ever said that Torbeck was Torbeck's best friend until Clementine, and Torbeck made Clementine say that. <laughs> You're my best friend, Torbeck. Why? But you're Torbeck's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> you're on your shoulders. All of Torbeck's <laughs> friends may choose five trinkets. <laughs> oh my gosh! I get five trinkets from my best friend Torbeck. You're so generous, Lord Torbeck. Oh, Torbeck <laughs> likes the sound of that. I mean, Prince Torbeck. That's what I got. Prince Torbeck. Let me see what I got. We should make up some business cards. I have trained you for this moment, Prince Torbeck. Like I foreshadowed six, five or more years ago when I said, if you ever become monarchs of your own Oh kingdoms. my gosh, Torbeck, look at this. I got a wooden mouse. Squeak, squeak. Oh, it squeaks. Wanna squeeze it? <laughs> no, Hoochie, no, 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 no. Stay with Torbeck. Stay with Torbeck. We'll get you rat snacks. We'll find you rat snacks. No. Oh, Torbeck, look. Oh, God, here's the first wooden teeth. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> horrific and unsanitary. <laughs> look, I found a new wooden teeth. Ow, 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 ow. I can't tell a lie. <laughs> a little humor for you, Americans. Oh my gosh, look at this! And you see as she pulls up a what is very clearly a fake beehive with these um these magically animated glittering bees that swirl around it, and it's clearly made for a sprite, a pixie, or a fairy. And she just happens to be one of those wow. things. And as she takes it and picks up, it's a wig! She puts it down <laughs> onto her head, and she has a beautiful beehive wig with all of these glittering bees that swirl around it. That now it's my caveman, and this is my quick, quick mouth. I'm the cutest twig there's ever been. Um, Greco, when do uh, I get a snail, and when do I have to fuck a troll? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you may acquire a snail when the time is right and there's a grand tawny, and one snail binds with you spiritually for life. You must fuck a troll if your kingdom ails for a decade against a nation of trolls and fucking a troll is the only thing that will save it in siring a, a bug bro. Hey, Greco, will you do me a favor? Yes. Do you see this tiny wooden stool that's sized for pixie or sprite or twig? And will you set it up next to Torbeck's throne so I can sit next to my best friend? Oh, that's a perfect idea. Yeah, Gricko's so wise, he can yes. be hand of the prince, and Twig can be best friend of the prince. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Will you put the stool there for me? Uh -oh. oh, actually, uh, Lord Torbeck, I figure as, as my first gift to you as monarch to monarch, I will grant you uh, my uh, grand maester to be your hand of the king. Why is Greco uh, ignoring me? Oh, well, I'm walking up, I'm walking up the, uh, I'm walking up the, uh, the, the, uh, the, 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 the trash heap, and I keep sliding. Oh, fuck! Okay, okay. Yeah, fuck! Uh, Greco's I'll stool. place it right yeah, here. You do first. that. However, there is a, there is a caveat to this. Anyone but the owner who holds this stool <coughs> gets splinters. <laughs> And so as you're carrying it up, you feel splinters just shoot into your hands. And they are, oh. every, you have 50 splinters in your hands. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, Tobek, I will grant, grant you my grand maester to be your hand of the king. I guess you'll never ignore Twig again. Hey, you Tobek. Twigs. Uh, uh, <laughs> have you thought about doing leeches about it? Uh, why is the grand, uh, why is the uh, grand maester? Mr. Bleeding. Uh, oh yeah, there's a lot of blood in his row, in my room, my robes. A uh, twig will sit on her little stool next to Torbeck, and oh. uh, she's just happy, um, squeezing uh. her, squeezing her mouth, uh, her mouse. 
using her new wooden teeth and um, looking very beautiful in her beehive wig. Oh, I'm like poking around the trinkets, just trying to find something I might be able to use in like a spell or something. Uh, uh, you can uh, all roll D100. Yeah, I'll, I'll roll and I'll yeah. say uh, as I'm looking. But you will uh, need to write these down because yeah, yeah, yeah. what I will say just for metagame knowledge is um, you will have more success. Obviously, these trinkets are the currency of the Feywild. You will have more success by paying with these trinkets if the trinket itself um, is some some way matches whoever you are trying to the trade relevance. with. Mm. The relevance of the trinket to the person is important. Mm. So. I'm convinced that this campaign is just an early 90s point and click adventure game. Yep. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Find the key! We go to the goblin. Well, you gotta kill those rabbits! We go, you, you gotta find my head! We get the head, we give it to the guy, we get the key, we give to the thing. Link's Awakening. Uh, 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 hundos? Do you want yeah. Uh, as I'm poking around, um, the uh, the pile of, of rubble, um, I'll say, you know, that brings up a good point. Uh, didn't weren't they riding snails? Didn't they have like snail stables around here or something? They might have snail stables. And Mr. Lot and Mr. Witch promised me that snail number two would find its way here, and he hasn't yet. They <laughs> did say that. Which means it makes that. sense because they're dirty liars. I haven't been saying much because I've been going around picking exactly the most perfect five trinkets that I think are going to be meaningfully important for this adventure and putting them in my pack. Great, and those numbers are? 68. 68. Uh, yes, you find a wooden pan flute um, that seems to attract harmless local fauna when played. You hand me the uh, You marker, play which... it a little bit and you notice that uh, a few actual mice come up. Um, you were able to hide them from view of Hootsie and they're able to go back into the woods. Uh, oh, uh, I need to hide these from Hootsie. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Hootsie. Hootsie glares at you as if you've done this many, many times before. 25. Incredible. Uh, you also find a um, a silver fork with the outer tines bent sideways. Silver oh, fork. Oh. With That's outer interesting. That is. That sounds like is it significant? Is it yeah. significant? Like a, like a dowsing rod? Yeah, 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 that's nine. what I was thinking. Nine. Yeah. Five, right? A chess piece shaped like a dancing satyr wearing a bishop's hat and clutching a gnarled staff. Oh, chess piece, geez. dancing satyr, gnarled staff. Satyr. I hope you get a number. I hope you get one, Grammy. No. no, crabby. I didn't get a one. I no. might give you one just to pick one of your random numbers and. I had and remove it. Make it a one. Yeah, make it a one. 63. 63. Well, 63. Why don't um, I go through all five? And sure. Then you can tell me which one. Black ex- executioner's hood sized for a pixie or sprite. Whoa. A pixie executioner hood? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gumdrop buttons. Uh, 74. <laughs> Is this the last one? Yep. A copper coin with a smiling satyr's face on one side and a satyr's skull on the other. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Gricko, what are your numbers? 19. All right. You find uh, a vitrified eye of a displacer beast. Whoa. Ooh. Are these in D&D Beyond? Or... Right there. <laughs> Check it. I'm just going to add them. Whoa, a displacer beast. I ought to go with my displacer beast cloak. I forgot I had that function. <laughs> and other numbers? Uh, 36. 36. Rock that floats and is small enough to hide in your closed fist. Whoa. Oh, and that's a rock fact. I'm going to give you a name. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my God, bro. 23. <laughs> Ball and cup toy that plays a short, victorious jingle whenever the ball lands in the cup. Oh, no. Ball in the cup! <laughs> it's ball in the cup! God, I got ball in the cup! Oh, Hootsie, you're, I'm, oh, you don't get to get this one. You don't have the opposable fun. Well, are you that... able to get the ball in the cup? Uh, I'm, I'm certainly trying. <laughs> oh, it's okay that you missed. You can still try to get the ball in the cup because the ball's attached to a string. <laughs> oh, my goodness! Ball in the cup! Oh, okay. 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 Uh, <laughs> Okay. You almost got it, Greg. Okay. Oh. Almost. Okay. Uh, that, that was close. Okay. A little less twist on, okay. the, on the sort of uh, backstroke okay. there. 
Is you it, you okay. do get the ball in the cup at once, but you get so excited you shake your wrist and it falls oh, out yeah. immediately. Oh. Uh, okay. You're just well, spinning it like a helicopter, man. You got to put a little arc in your oh, wrist. Uh, too much. I'm doing oh. terrible. Was, was that the fifth one for uh, you? That would, no, that was the third. Sorry. Okay. Uh, 55. Uh, a mask that helps you remember your dreams if you wear it while you sleep. Oh. Oh, That's oh what does the mask look like? Uh, whatever you'd like it to. Okay. I'll, I'll think of something. Taper. I'll, Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yep. 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 And what's the last one? Ninety. Ninety. A set of false wooden teeth. Nice. <laughs> Should I re-roll? No. Okay. Now you also have. She has two sets of false wooden teeth. <laughs> That's so you now have a third Hang set on. of false wooden teeth. Wooden teeth up here. I am a taper. What can't tell a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a taper with cat color line. I've got a cat's eye and a floating rook. <laughs> Dorvac, are you uh, taking anything? Yes. Okay. Uh, I took five items and I'm keeping the scarf as well. Perfect, yes. Uh, 50. 50. You find a tiny hourglass without sand in it. Oh. Ooh. Uh, 71. Oh. A wooden apple painted blue. Uh, oh, uh, 82. The blue feather from Harvest Moon. A petrified robin's egg. Oh. Uh, petrified robin. Uh, 39. 39. A vial of viscous li- liquid labeled Fomorian spit. Do not oh, drink. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, maybe later. <laughs> 64. 64. Piano key carved from a satyr's horn. Okay. Oh, wow. That's and then cool. and I'm just keeping the scarf as well. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing it. Gideon. Uh, 40. Wax candle that roars and crackles like a bonfire while lit. Oh, that's fucking great. We have that ice bound. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. 45. <laughs> pretty cool. What, you said 45? 45. Sorry, I wasn't listening to you. A bar of soap that smells like something memorable from your childhood. Oh. I don't need this. Soap with a memory inside. <laughs> soap with a memory inside. <laughs> Only a gold piece. Uh, three. Silver hand mirror with a nymph, nymph-shaped nymph handle. Interesting. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Uh, 28. Tiny clockwork dragonfly that slowly beats its wings, <gasps> but can't fly when wound up. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. It's fucking perfect. 73. Nunchaku sized for a pixie or sprite. <laughs> <laughs> Nunchaku! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know, that's actually Gosh. That's a, a <laughs> terrible <laughs> weapon. <laughs> oh, Man, we got tiny. so much pixie stuff, we are running them. We're going to be able to make them an executioner with nunchucks. <laughs> this is like this fame. Is badass. This is like fame all ninja shit. <laughs> Gosh, look at this glass green eye. Mm. It's glowing. Yeah, you want to see something cool? Check out this clockwork thing, man. This is just like that dragonfly from the crown. You should study. study the, oh, the, I'm going to study this. Don't I'm, break it, though. Don't well, break uh, it. Gideon. Uh, Okay. You have been looking through your storybook, and you have seen uh, inside of it, at, towards the back, a page that you haven't been able to decipher yet. You see the schematics for this exact same dragonfly. <gasps> ton, ton, ton. Crummy. I got a 34. Fake three dragon anti card depicting a fairy dragon. No way. This is fate. Hold on. Uh, depicting a what? Sorry. It's a fake dragon. three dragon anti card depicting a fairy dragon. I mean, that's just that really could be more perfect. Good God. Oh, what to do? Add it to your hat. Uh, yeah, I'm really going to add to that as a third <laughs> card in my hat. Oh, my God. Um, I got a 94. Tasteless wine charm shaped like a sprite. Ooh. Wine charm. Oh, sorry, tasseled wine charm. Tasteless. Oh, tasteless. For Rosé Night! (laughs) (laughs) Tasseled, but I repeat myself. (laughs) Absolutely tasteless. Which wine chimes did you guys bring? Yeah, Uh, my goodness. Okay, uh, 74. 
lot of fours <clears throat> in the world. Um, what's the other one that you have? 55. Just because I think we might skip that I already one. know 74. Okay. Um... Okay, and then the last one. I mean, I just want to see which one to replace. 49? So 74, 55, 49. A piece of parchment bearing a child's drawing of an oni. Ooh. Ooh. That's uh, fucking horrifying. These are spooky. That, oh, that is very macabre. What? A gnomi? An, an oni. oni. Oh, an oni. An oni. Oh, my God. So basically what the kid saw under the bed before he got fucking oh. chomped. Okay, that's dark. Uh, A one hundred sided die the size of a plum, cut from coal. I mean, oh my god, this is like spooky fate shit, fucking literally. (laughs) And then the last one, the one I'm replacing, is just the it's the the repeated one, a cookie cutter shaped like a unicorn. Oh my god, one hundred percent. Okay, nice. And then cookie cutter. It does 1d4 piercing damage. <laughs> this is oh, wow. Well, yeah. That's so many cool monies that we got to just spend all over the Feywild. Mm. Sad thing is, I don't want to give up any of mine. I need two sets of wooden teeth. <laughs> what happens if I break the first set of wooden teeth? Are we allowed? Good question. Uh, um, uh, Prince Torbeck, sir. Yeah. Are we allowed to... Uh, Rumbage through and perhaps find one additional to make a trade. Oh, yeah, of course. Torbeck only said five as an arbitrary number to go easy on the DM. <laughs> yes. You can take as much as you want. Yes. Well, I'd just, like to take George, 20. I don't, I'd, I'd like just, to drink 35 items, wanted, please. I would like to just give Hootsie something. Of course, Hootsie is Torbeck's best friend, too. <laughs> She's looking your arm like that. <laughs> I'm still petting her like an evil yeah. like villain. <laughs> I'll set her down. Uh, I'm going to roll... Uh, 65, if that's something that is allowed. <clears throat> A tiny wooden lute with cat ears, cat hairs for strings. Oh. I don't think she's going to be able to play that with her big bear paws. Well, I am a master musician, and Hootsie, I know you've always been complaining about not being able to uh, chew ruminant vegetables when I tell you to eat your greens. You're like, oh, but Papa, I'm a carnivore. Why are you having me eat dark leafy greens? And I'll say, well, a very attractive blogger in yoga pants said you should. <laughs> And I want to look like a very good dad in front of them. Your turn. Keep it again. So, here you go, and now you can match your best friend, Twig. I'm going to give her the full 20 teeth. So she... <laughs> And they are magical wooden teeth. They resize to fit oh, oh, his mouth. Oh and as she opens God. her beak, you see wooden human teeth inside of her oh. beak. <laughs> well, and now you and now Hootsu, you have to remember that dental health is very important. <laughs> now, finally, and frosty. Yeah. Well, now we're gonna get both of you flossing because remember what uh, what Chuckles told Uncle Gideon that you want to avoid. Oh, yeah. the yeah. Silent menace of Ginger Vitus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It yeah. made Hootsie yeah. look like the bear that they used to teach children how to brush their fucking teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get to teach you to brush your teeth. Oh, this is going to be so wonderful. Yeah, I can't really tell if this is cute or horrifying. Yeah. And now, uh, and now I can. The, I'm leaning towards the ladder. Yeah. And now I can do this. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> and I play my tiny lute. Oh, uh, what were some of the other items that you got? I didn't see. Oh, oh, I got my glass. Uh, you can tell us it's a displacer beast uh, on account of it being glowing green even after death. That's something that is. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. very. Yeah, I mean, a, a glass cat's eye. Is, mm-hmm. It's yeah. I mean, I quite like it. It matches my cloak. Hey, got- wasn't Clapper Claw supposed to be watching the skiffs? What happened? What? And you see, <laughs> and you see that uh, Twig is standing at the very edge of the stump, looking down uh, towards the area where the skiffs had been. Clapper Claw's not there, and one of the skiffs is gone. Hey, Prince, your navy's under assault, man. Oh, Torbeck hasn't assembled any kind of military yet. <laughs> Did you order that scarecrow to go? Because there it goes. <laughs> 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 Didn't you 
you leave your scarecrow running. <laughs> I think it's getting away. We have to get down there right away. Follow me. What a thrill. <laughs> <laughs> With darkness and silence through the night. I just silently go out the clock. <laughs> With a twig, you watch as. So we're going down? Uh, well, uh, where does it say that his head is? Not here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't tell you what it no, said. No, you don't. Oh, you're going to read the it read a whole book. Oh, yeah. Now he's ignoring you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No. It says right here, oh. Agden gives one Clabricor skull, skull to Bevlorna Blightstraw. Oh, oh. fuck it. It's in the boss room. It says rendered. <laughs> Does it say where the big skull key is? Wait, wait, what is service no, is rendered? But, but it does say that it now resides in Bavlorna's cottage's treasure room. That's uh, what I was saying. Wait, service classic is... Classic adventure game. S- service is rendered. That means that Agden was... He did something. Maybe he was beating up the poor old... Uh, did you see how fucking fast that dude was moving? Wait, Ain't no other hair going No, I don't know. I just, no, just, no, no, just no, 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 doing this. In uh, the, you watch his twig. All right, then. She rears back and she just runs straight off of the ledge. No, wait. And then she flies because she is a fairy creature. Oh, we'll Her just, wings yeah. unfurl be, and she begins to fly we'll down, down alongside you. Three minutes and forty-five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I give my life <laughs> for honor, but for you. Oh, it's a ladder! It's a ladder! Yeah, it's like this. In my time, and you eventually make your way down to the dock <laughs> and to, uh, to the area of the uh, the area of the docks where the two skiffs had been. One of them is clearly missing. The other does seem to be securely tied to the dock, um, where it had been floating aimlessly in the dock when you had originally seen it. So it does look like Clapper Claw found a way to tie it there. Uh, bits of the rope have been snipped partially in half. Uh, clearly, uh, Clapper Claws, <laughs> Crab Claws uh, are a little hard to manage, and um, they almost cut through some of the rope. Um, but it is. Uh, it was clearly done as a sign of goodwill, and you do see that stuck to one of the posts is a small note, um, and scribbled in a childlike handwriting um, are the words: um, "Sorry, couldn't stay. Was called back to downfall. Take this skiff and just go straight through the opening. You'll get there no problem." Ooh, yeah, that's very kind of. Uh... They blessed us. They blessed our, our boat. It's, it's now like a mistraveling boat. <gasps> Man, things are kind of looking up. We got a lot of cool stuff for killing that rabbit. Good job, Tolbeck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at first I was like a little, ooh, it's a little macabre, you know? <laughs> but, but now after all the cool stuff, I mean, I got a ball in the cup. Oh! <laughs> I didn't get a ball in the cup. Oh, I forgot my 10 foot pole. I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> Not for honor, but for you. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> this stuff is so cool, it almost lightens the horrific moral load that is on Torbeck's shoulders for committing murder. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, <laughs> before we take this gift. We have to go find the hill, see if we can find Jingle Jingle and give her her truffles back. I can deliver it if you need me to. <gasps> I've got wings. Well, no, then we gotta get the key and we gotta take it <laughs> back to Sir Talavar. Oh. Okay, I can take the key to Sir Talavar. A lot of sound of that. Handy. No, I think I know. I think we we gotta be the one to do it, right? No, so. as long as long as we say, oh hey, can we send both of them a note? Yeah, okay. Well, can we send both of them like some sort of official contract? I mean, this is. No, you no, brought up a contract, yeah. Brought up a contract. Do you and, mind? And, and oh, 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 Twig, you can have them sign for delivery. <laughs> exactly yeah, right. Sure. And the thing is, COD, if you know I'm what I mean. Pulled ah. <laughs> <laughs> that one fast. once or twice. <laughs> what? I'm super fast. All right, well. 
does that mean that we can wait here? I can go 60 feet! How, how, how quickly can you go In one span feet? of time, anybody can go 60 feet. He's at, yeah. his, he's at the slanty tower in a cage. Okay. I, I can go Ooh. 90 feet if I wanted to. Wow! But through the swamp? I need to rest. <gasps> I've seen you like, oh, oh no, I, ver- just, I just appear 90 feet away. But how, but how many times can you do that? If Very I use few. my hut, I can go even fasterest. It's like you feel like you can look up in the sky and teleport us all one mile. <laughs> yes, and this is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely it's fucking Can you imagine if you had something so ridiculously powerful? <laughs> yes, okay, well, I'm going to leave in now that without scenario, any contracts. See you later, bye. I would make the argument that I could do 114,000 bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, write the contracts, Chloe. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll, I'll snap from this you know, shadowy, swampy, uh, almost like portal will open up. These these contracts will float, and I'll just sort of write them up real quick. And it's for services rendered. <laughs> uh, so there's gonna be one for you know in exchange for uh, truffles, key to cage of you know Sir Talavar. Uh, you know, please sign on delivery. And the next one will be uh, for <clears throat> one key of Talavar's cage, uh, you know, uh, audience with uh, Titania, Queen of the Fae. Do I need to deliver these? <clears throat> or could Pictunia do it? <laughs> well, <I don't> know. <laughs> is Pictunia capable of asking for a signature? <laughs> <laughs> It's not really in a room to fuck this. Do you want to see? I mean, sure. Um, she she reaches <laughs> down into her acorn purse and she pulls out um, she pulls out a what appears to be a small truffle and she tosses it up into the air and Pigtunia appears out of the truffle oh. um, and she begins to fly. Twig's eyes go a milky white. And you watch as Pegtunia's mouth opens up and you hear, See, I can ask if you would like to sign. Hi, I'm Twig Tunia, and I'm inside Big Tunia. Here I am asking questions. So Wow, Twig is twerking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. I mean she has the blood of the first fae. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, really uh, great power! <laughs> oh, she's the three-eyed fairy. Ah, uh, yo, it's <laughs> for us. Yes. Oh, oh, my God. she's got oh. three eyes, man! <laughs> oh. oh my oh. gosh! Oh. I can't wait to learn never what that means. <laughs> uh, Twig's eyes return to normal, uh, and she whispers into one of Pigtunia's floppy ears uh, exactly what the instructions are as you are able to strap the um, the contracts to uh, two of Pigtunia's feet. I'll take one of my rings and I'll, they're, they're rolled up, I'll take one of my rings and just like place it against the rolled up scroll of parchment. I do that two times and almost magically it'll generate a wax seal that has a skull with a top hat on it. And it'll go, (laughs) 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 The wailing sounds of souls. Yeah, and it'll be Um, a wailing. Beetlejuice door where they're all like. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, you are able to take the uh, satchel of truffles and place them over uh, Pigtunia's shoulder. Um, She sniffs at the truffles longingly, but she's been ordered not to eat any of them. Um, And she's a loyal familiar. All right, Um, just put this in your mouth. Can they, like, put it in the, you strap the them side. to her to her legs. Oh, all right. I'll just flash it to. Okay, Pig Junior, you know what to do. Go forth and deliver contracts <laughs> with nefarious small script. Now remember, truffles for the keys. Yes. Keys, you unlock the guy, yes. and the guy guarantees us the audience. And when you're done, come back to me because until then. I don't have a very useful, important part of my, my, my life, and my only other friend. So go. Yes, if you mess this up, you're snout of a job. She rushes over and she embraces Pigtunia, and Pigtunia flies off into the into the fog. 
uh, carrying your contract. Good luck, Pictunia. Yeah, fine. Tying up right. some of the loose ends that I don't want to deal with as a DM. Oh, I love it. It's like uh, uh, Lumi in Prime. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking, she handles out all of that. We don't have to no. go back there. That happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I also wanted to pitch that when, along with the Wailing Souls, it'll be. Uh, in tune and in the same pitch will be a Duke Ellington style uh, uh, big band. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. So it'll be souls and the, the Duke Ellington okay. uh, jazz whale. I feel much better about that. I don't think I'm ready to go adventuring all on my own just yet. Well, you've done unbelievably well so far. You and were also, able to. I realized, as I suggested, who's going to pr- who's going to further the plot if I leave? <laughs> That's a good thought. Oh no, yeah, we, we need you desperately. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stay for a bit longer until we can get our fey legs. You but know, you, you were able to to negotiate. Uh, uh, you handled yourself well in combat. Uh, uh, you committed war crimes uh, you committed way, way before crimes. we you ever did. Handle oh, exploration, yeah. and you uh, you were transformed into a uh, into an owl. And even though you were twigging. <laughs> Out, uh, you were able to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Word play with this guy. Fro- Fro- oh, was God. waiting for three hours to say that. <laughs> so, I've been waiting for so long. Yeah. So, I you read that book. Like yeah. a champ. You know, I'm it's gonna, hard to read. I'm going to continue to read this this ledger while we make our way because it's all in Sylvan and I'm no Sylvan like the back of myself. And so, um, let's get in the boat and go to Downfall, I guess. Yeah. If you say so. <laughs> okay. I'm, 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 yeah, that's, an, that's enough frosting. You know what? I'm going to get that. That's enough frosting. <laughs> Stick with the, the intelligence, you know? Fun to the height of intelligence. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I get the fucking scared. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, here, you can play with this for a little while. You're a small fellow. It magically goes in as I use my magical hand, my psionic hand, to get it into the cup. <gasps> Whoa! Okay, give it here, give it here, give it here. I bet, I bet I can do better. <sighs> <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, okay. Ah, on okay. this attempt, it's about to go in, and oh, a hand like knocks it up. <laughs> bad luck, bad luck. Hootsie, you should have always learned to be persistent, even for something as simple as bowling a cup. And with that, you all climb into the skiff. You unhook the rope. Um, it's very easy, considering so much of it was damaged by Clapper Claw's claws. Um, but you are able to get into the skiff and begin to make your way through an opening in the Queen's Way, part of the Queen's Way that has completely crumbled uh, by the encroaching swamp. And though your vision is obscured, you follow the note and you just continue to head through the fog. And it's it feels almost magic in the way the skiff is propelled forward. Um, you do not need to row uh, as it as the swamp itself carries you uh, Ooh, deeper cool. into the murky recesses of this place. Uh, the mangrove trees hang low over you. They graze against you as you, um, as you move slowly along the almost still water. The thick fog hangs heavy in the air, obscuring the area around you so that the world appears to have shrunk to only 20 feet in all directions. Before you, the waterway widens and the current slows, giving the impression that you have entered a lake. Croaking voices penetrate the fog, through which dark shapes appear, resolving into two rowboats. Manning the oars of each rowboat are two bullywugs. And in them, you see that each rowboat has not only the uh, bullywugs that are rowing, but there are also, in total, four finely dressed bullywugs. A male and a female in each. The females have their um, parasols twirling behind them as they wear lacy dresses. Um, the men in top hats and um, and uh, coats are singing songs to them as they giggle and laugh as they enjoy a nice uh, row around this lake. And as you begin to slide in, one of the boats turns towards you and you hear... Welcome to Downfall, travelers. You should really make your way to see the king. Oh, he would love to see them, wouldn't he? I think he would. They're quite interesting. Oh, look over here, Julia. Do you see? They're not bullywugs at all. The king will love them. 
And that is where we won the session. Ooh. Is there a song uh, at night when the lake is a mirror <laughs> and the moon rides away from the shore? I was going to say, uh, Froggy did go a courting. Oh. And he did ride out of <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. We're not done. Thanks for We're not session. done. We're not done. Thank you, Nikki. What a fun session. What do you mean thank we're you. not done? We're not done. We have Vintage and Chill. We are going to catch up on thank yous. We're not going to forget that again. Uh, catch up on thank yous before we, we do that. But um, we're going to have our Vintage and Chill. We're going to do our post session hangout chat, talk about our favorite moments, theories, just answer all of your questions. Uh, and then, uh, but if you're not going to stick around for that, check out Geek Grind Coffee, our first overall channel sponsor um, that we've basically ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and so thank you so much, Geek Grind Coffee. Uh, you can use code um, LEGEND20 20. for 20% off your first order. So we'd really appreciate it if you would use that code. Um, we are going to be back on Friday night for Icebound. Yep. For our, can we just say what we're doing? What's in this book? We're gonna go into a fucking crash nautiloid spaceship, basically, and probably get et up by medulla uh, munchers. Uh, thought eaters, uh, mind flayers, potentially. It's gonna be a sweaty good time. It'll be a, it'll be a, a, a very Why intense did he mega sweaty? dungeon. I'm um, brimming with excitement, and I finally get to eat dinner. Uh, what else? Um, we have a Patreon. We'd appreciate you checking out that a merch store where these amazing shirts came from. So thank you. Yeah, huge thanks to our incredible artists who did all this stuff. I think they're all different artists. Yeah, they're all different artists. Oh no, these are the same. COD designs. And uh, the artists that did my shirt shirt and Mike's shirt were also the same artists. Yeah, same. Yeah, it's the our, same our, Andy and I shirt yeah, are, COD. The, are the same yeah. wow. COD designs, yeah. Yeah. What shows range. the versatility of the artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this yeah. is sharp. If you haven't picked up on the fact that I love beans, and that's yeah. a catchphrase that Frost has, and that there are beans secretly hidden all over this design, <laughs> it's depthful. Yeah. Um, and I, is that it? Is that, all, is that what yeah. we got? Uh, the new Patreon tiers. New Patreon tiers. Check them out. Yeah. Yep. F new, uh, new perks, new, uh, new tiers, uh, new flavor. Um, we're excited to be having our first uh, hang stage, stage Q and A. &A. Yeah, yeah, stage. Q &A. Yeah, and then uh, and voice chat and voice chat hangout. So that'll so be if fun. If you ever just want to like chat with us in Discord, this is the first time we've ever really done it. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be good. Officially, so it's gonna be good. good. Let's all play League of Legends. Yeah, I, yeah. I would like to learn. Yeah, yeah, we can teach Derek. I'm gonna learn how to play the fun. Legend League. Yeah. Although, though, everyone apparently everyone's saying the game is dying because they're focusing basically on all their other games and no, and they always all, say all the creators are raging. People have been saying, have been saying League is dying That's for true. literally. Ever. I haven't played in a while, but I did go so for the first time. Anyway, let's cut over. We are gonna cut over very quickly. We don't want to cut over, but uh, thank yous. Thank you. Right? Oh, we're all gonna do a thank yous. Yes. Oh, uh, what do we got? What do we got? Can you click? Um, where to, Luna? I know that you're uh, that you're gone. Uh, thank you so much for the thousand bits, Nerd House Tabletop. If any, if you're still Oof. here, thank you so much for the raid. This was 28 minutes ago. We really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> blah, blah. Ironing Bjorn DM. Thank yeah. you for gifting a sub, the medieval white. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. you know, uh, who is that? Tony Jackass. the Tigger gifted us two yeah, thank subs. You. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Blade hey. Singer uh, 4KDH KHD tip ten dollars. Can you read that? Oh, been, oh, going back. Go ahead. Uh, I've been going back and watching some of the Avengers one shot. Got to say, Andy was the best girl in the anime one shot. Go, Andy Trunks, you're all amazing. Holy shit! Holy, that is the deepest is that, cut is, comment. Yeah. Is that tactical have, waifu? That's yeah. a, that, that is the deepest cut comment I think we've right. ever gotten. Yeah. Not even I've seen tactical waifu. Yeah, yeah. there are two <laughs> sessions that I have not seen, and that's one of them. Wow. Tactical waifu is good. You should watch. I really it. should it's, watch. It's it. a lot. It was I a should. lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I've seen our thousand other sessions. Uh, Ginger tiered five hundred bits. I'm gonna die. I love y'all so much. Much. We love you. I like to have right. shredded ads from the laughter y'all calls. You know, I wish, I always say that I have six pack ads just hidden under a keg. Um, <laughs> what else we got? The keg is good. Man. Exactly. Oh, and uh, Salsa ADHD t gifted a tier one sub to Tigris Gamer. 149 gifted subs. Wow. Holy hand grenade. Sloths. Unbelievable. Oh my, gosh. oh my god. And that was after 10 gifted subs. Oh my gosh, bringing them, unbelievable. Uh, Satsuri, uh, Satsuri cheered 500 bits, just caught up and been finally watched live. Love you guys. We I love that you can watch yeah, the live. That's where and that's it was it? the last one, yeah. Awesome, thank up. you everybody, seriously. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, join our Discord. Otherwise, we're gonna cut over. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>